I know, I know, I know. This is probably a small majority. You're probably going to get on my case for this too. But the more I read of Bleach, like, and I know, I know you're going to say, okay? Don't come at me. All right. Ishida. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Volume 1, the anime and manga podcast where we highlight and discuss new series each week. But today we are back once again with more Dunkai. It's been a while. But we're back, which means that today, my name is Josh Vasto Lorde Michaels, and I am joined by uh, Megan Lavaderis Perrine. Okay, okay, okay. I had to, had to <laughs> refer to the notes, but I'll allow it. <laughs> I didn't want to butcher it too badly. Maybe I already did. I don't know how it's. <clears throat> no, you're fine. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of what we call our Dunkai series, our Bleach read through. Um, could also be considered a Bleach recap if you're getting ready for the anime <laughs> that's coming out soon. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Aronkar Downfall Arc Part 1. That's going to be chapters 341 through 383. Had to, had to check my notes. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, this is just the first part. Uh, then there's one more part to this. Uh, and then we only have one more episode of Dun Kai left. Uh, well, that's meaning a total of three, I guess. Um, then we're going to get into the anime. Hopefully we'll have timed it so the anime will be coming out right around that time. I know a lot of people are encouraging us to read the manga um, as well as watch the anime. We'll do our best. Maybe uh, we've kind of talked about it. Um, the way we'll do it is watch the anime and then go back and read the chapters that correspond with the episode. That way we're not having to read huge chunks uh, at one time, so we can kind yeah. of also start to branch out and be able to cover more. And um, I don't know if we were recording Dunkai's when they announced the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime adaption. I think we started and then it got announced later. I could not, not tell you. Yeah, if I'm I not could mistaken. not tell you. But um, yeah, it's 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 definitely like wow, it's already almost here. I mean, it's in yeah. October, like. We were like, oh, my God, October is going to be so far away. And now we're like here. And I'm like, it's almost September. What? I know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And, you know, like we said, hopefully we've timed it so that by the time we're kind of finishing up um, <clears throat> with our Dunkai read through, it'll correspond with the beginning of the anime. And then we'll go read the chapters that correspond with those episodes. But we want to keep our reactions because it is very foggy for me. Like I've said many times before, Megan's never seen it, ha never read it. So uh, we want to keep our reactions as pure as possible. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm so excited. It's almost here, guys. It's almost here. Um, all right. <clears throat> well, um, we have a highlighted comment that I want to get to today, too. I'm trying to decide if we should just start giving our general thoughts. Let's do that. Let's give our general mm. thoughts on the Arankar Downfall Part 1 arc uh, before we get to that highlighted comment and then start going through beat by beat. Megan, what do you mm. think? Uh, lots of fighting. Lots of fighting. Lots of fighting. It's what, it's what Bleach is. <laughs> it's more than that. <laughs> I'm not, don't get me wrong, please. This arc, uh, uh, but in, yeah, it's in particular, a big part yeah, it was a lot, lot of, lot of fighting uh, happening, which is like fine because we do get to see, um, you know, the Vizards come back. That was definitely like the highlight for me in these chapters in this arc. Um, when they came in the mix, I was like more interested in them seeing the other captains for the first time in so long and seeing Absolutely. Aizen. Like, that's what excited me the most, that build up to that fight. Um, it did happen further along in the arc. Uh, not that, like, it was bad, but that when that started happening, I was, like, way more invested um, yeah. because that's what I was looking forward to the most. Um, I 100, 100, 100 percent agree. I am living for the Vice Arts right yeah. now. And uh, getting that, that uh, past arc getting to know more about their relationship with some of the other captains. We got that a while ago. These fights have been happening. These chapters have been going on for quite some time. I was starting to wonder when they were going to come in and uh, when they did, it was, it was so worth the wait. Um, mm -hmm. Just seeing how some of them didn't care to re to have these like uh, heartfelt uh, reunions. Some of them, you know, had reunions in their own sort of tsundere well, ways. Uh, but it was really, really cool because you you knew the history between them now. The history for sure. And I did like, um, you know, how they weren't immediately like, oh, yeah, no, we're all friends. Like, we're all going to team up to defeat Aizen. They're like, OK, we're not like your guys's like companions. Like, we're not going we're not teaming up with you. Yeah, like, don't get it twisted. We are. Um, what, what's the word? Um, <laughs> Basically, they united say that, like, with Ichigo. Yeah. And we want Udahara. to defeat 
and Urahara. Urahara. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Urahara, Ichigo, and we want to defeat Aizen. So. Uh, uh, an enemy of an enemy is technically an ally. I yeah. I think is what they also said. Yeah. But I just like that that part too with Shinji and he's just like, you know, don't get it twisted, old man. Like, <laughs> I'm not your friend. We're not here to be friends. Well, bro, that was a crazy panel. When Yamato first saw them appear, he had no idea. Uh, I, I believe, based on his reaction, he had no idea that they were still alive and kicking. Maybe, you know, he did uh, think they were alive, but maybe didn't expect them to show up in that moment. I don't know. But his face, like if you go back that panel, he looks shocked. He's shook. Uh, he looks so shook. Face cracked. Uh, and uh, I just love that Shenji kind of tells him straight up. Straight like, up, yeah. Because he goes to him. Yamato goes to him and is like, are, are you, you know, are you here to help us? Will you help us? You know, will you be our allies? And he's like, uh, no. Uh, but Aizen is our enemy, so we will do that. Yeah, I feel like he yeah, was just like, yeah, I kind of figured that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we kind of we kind of fucked you guys. Bro, but that's why I like the <laughs> Vizards and Shinji, like, outside of just, like, how fucking cool they all look. Um, but, yeah, getting to know more about them and just that they went through a lot, dude. They went through they so much. They did. Yeah, yeah. And they've come out of the other end of it. Like, yeah, they have some resentments, but they're also just uh, using their power to 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 do what they can uh, to take out the person who caused all of yeah. this trouble in their life. And all of their relationships are really, also like... a very bad person. <laughs> yeah. It was really interesting because we had that interaction with, like, Soy Fawn, mm -hmm. um, and I forget his name, the big guy. The big oh, nice yeah. guy. Oh, I, yeah, I, uh, I wrote it down. Um, I forget his name. It's, like, Omida or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Omida. No, 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 not Omida. Oh, the Hachi. Vizard. Hachi. Yeah, Hachi. Hachi, yeah. And she's like, I, I don't you were know. About the other guy. No, yeah, Omida's goaded too. Yeah. Uh, but Hachi's just like, yeah, like you know, I figured that you wouldn't say that you knew me. I was like, what? Cold. Cold. So I bought the cold. She's an ice queen. I was like, oh, she's like, I don't know him. I've never seen him in my life. I was like, damn. Well, yeah, because he greets her, bro. Awkward, dude. He greets her. Like so, I found you. Yeah. So good to see you. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah. and he's like, and then, yeah. and I, I, I'm probably butchering this other person's name, but uh, Omida. Uh, Omida. Oh, yeah. He he uh, says Omeda, like, oh Omeda. yeah, Omida. Yeah. He says, you know him, and she goes, never seen him in my life. Bro, that's my worst fear. Like, you know, seeing someone like, you know, usually when you see someone from like your past or like high school or anything, you're like not going to be the first to go up to them. But if you get the courage to go up to them and they go, I've never seen this. Like, I, I don't know you. I've never seen you. Like, yeah, I would never do that. <laughs> I would never go up. To, if I saw somebody that I knew from high school, first of all, didn't know a lot of people in high school, first of mm. all. Um, so there's a <laughs> really high chance that they have no idea who I am. Uh, I'm not going to make that gamble. Um but even if I did think that they would remember me, still wouldn't do it. Even if I, even if they were my dear friend, That's horrible. <laughs> I would just keep shopping, dude. I would leave the store, go to another. But store. imagine, but like, get, mustering up the courage, like he did, like Haji did, and he was just like, okay, I'm gonna do it, because all the other ones are trepidatious, I guess. And he's like, I don't really care. But he went out of his way to greet her, and she's like, I've never seen you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How horrible! Yeah. And he said, like, I figured you would say that. He starts walking away. I was like. My heart broke a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely up there as one of my favorite Fizards. And not just them showing up, but getting to see their masks, too. Oh, um, my God. Okay, so, yeah. Highlight mask. Let's see. I, I wrote their names Love has down. a sick mask. Love? It's Love and it's love and Rose. Uh, Yeah, I mean, well, Love and yeah. Rose have the best masks in the I game. I mean, you know, does, you know, aside from the mask we've already seen, like uh, Hiyori and uh, Shinji's mask, top tier masks right there. Yeah, but Love and Rose nah, have it. Not better. Down pat. It's better. Wow. Comment below. Yeah, who's, who's your, your favorite, favorite Vizard mask? mask? Who's your favorite Vizard fav mask? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were. Whatever. Um, <sighs> but there was even a panel, and I, I don't know how many people watching and listening have, have read the Shonen series Dan today, and we talk about it a lot. But there was a panel where just the way Love was standing in his mask, that I was like, this is fucking Dan to Dan. Uh, this inspired is fucking by. Dan to Dan. Inspired by. Uh, or or not that Bleach is inspired by Dan Dan, but that Dan Dan is inspired by Bleach. Let's get that right. How dare you? Yeah. Ble but obviously, because Bleach came way before <laughs> Dan Dan. Obviously. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean. I we, love seeing all their masks, too. I yeah. was, I'm a sucker for that. I, I did really enjoy, like, all of those moments. Like, that was definitely highlight, highlight, highlight for me. Um, like Kenny and Byakuya was like so fun to see too. Bro, every time I see them together, I fucking you. Uh, yeah, you. You know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I you know. You know I perform yeah. bankai in my. That's 
in my uh, you know, lower region. I perform my you, I release my zampacto. Uh you shit yourself. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> you yes. Yes. Your bonkai. Yes. Your butt bonkai. Yeah, my butt kai. Yes. Yeah. Uh, have we said that in a while? I don't feel like we, I think we we're have. Due. I think Rukia. we're due for, a, no, for yeah. one. For one. For, for one. one butt kai. We can't. Well, what's the other one that we would say? Um, I forget. Zon cocktail. Oh, I don't know if we have. We ever said that? <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> when I see uh, Byakuya and Kenny, I release my Zon cocktail. Yeah, I release it. Mm -hmm. It's got two forms. Two that, releases. Oh my God. Stop. <laughs> Enough. Enough. Uh, uh, but, you know, <laughs> Kimpachi's looking lean too, boy. Yeah. This boy looking lean. I saw, I saw, yeah. I saw him. I, you know, when I first met him, you know, I could be misremembering, but I thought he was a little more jacked. Mm -hmm. This this fool looks like body goals, dude. He's, he's, he's uh, lean. He's lean and like he looks. He's lean and mean. Yeah, he's lean and mean and he looks, uh, he looks tough, you know. He's, he looks fit. He fit. Tight. He looks tight. tight. That's what I. Toy, like a toy guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, definitely like so great. And I know, I know, I know this is probably a small majority. You're probably going to get on my case for this too. But the more I read of Bleach, like, and I know, I know you're going to say, okay, don't come at me. Okay. All right. Ishida. Right. And Orihime. Oh, you're shipping them. I ship them more than... Ichigo and Orihime. You know what? Because um, Ishida, like, okay, you know, he has like, you know, he's, he's he he wants to protect her. He has the brute strength to do so. He's just not as sensitive, you know, like, yeah. and I don't know. I just think he gets lost in the sauce, and Ishida's just there with Orihime, and right, is he's, like he's, helping her along and like talking her through things and like being like. I don't know. I okay. I know. I know. But I, I just, I just like, I just like when I see them on page together. Bro, your opinion is your opinion, and, and it hurts my heart. The heart wants what the heart wants, and your yeah. heart wants them to be together. I'm no Rukia and Ichigo shipper. Let's get let, let's not get that twisted. But I wonder how controversial uh, Orihime and Ishida um, that ship is. I wonder how controversial it is too. Um, I do. What do you think? I tend to like agree at this point in the story. At this point in the story, I mean. It's almost hard to 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 see it any other way, other than, you know, Orihime's heart, you know, belonging or her wanting so badly to yeah. be with Ichigo. If 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 she was just caring about Ichigo because he was a friend, then just based on interaction alone between her and Uryu Ishida, uh, I think that uh, they would be a better fit because, like you said, Ichigo's just he's a busy guy. He's, he's a, a busy, busy guy, guy, and he's doing big things. And it makes me upset. Uh, not upset, but like you could just tell, like Ishida, like. I don't know. He really does care about her and he's really there for her. And like Ichigo does the same, but it just feels so one sided with Orihime because Ichigo is so busy, you know, is doing that nine to five, right. is doing that Soul Reaper mass shit. Right. Deputy, so, deputy shit. Yeah, deputy shit. And like he doesn't have time for romance. And like if it was more like, I don't know, if I saw him being romantic in any other type of way than just saving her, exactly. then I would feel a little different. Um, but. That's just me. That's just my... Uh... And I get... You know, I, I really do get what you're saying. I really do feel that. Especially, you know, take Orihime's just for a second. Like, take her love for him and turn it into, like, on her end, right? Because you're right. It does feel one-sided. Switch that love to her caring about him and loving him as a friend. And it would just make more sense at this point in the story uh, for her and Uryu to, 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 to link up. Because, like you said, he's just the one who's always there for, for her and listening to her. And, you know, even... In the midst of battle, he is like, you know, and and, and Ichigo wants to Ichigo. I mean, he, but I think he I, wants it, it to. feels like out of, you know, wanting to take care of his friend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what it Someone feels he cares like. About. Exactly. And I wish like we saw more of that romance from him because that I'd be more inclined to ship them. But right now, you know, he's like, you know, guard her with your life. And he's like, you didn't have to tell me that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. And the whole, their whole interaction in Soul Society, too, like. They were linked up, like they were like yeah. together, and this made me so happy to see. Well, maybe that's gonna be Ishida's role, or maybe that will be Ishida's role down the line, where it comes to a point where <gasps> they you know, fight. Maybe. No way. Maybe I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying you know keep you know keep an open mind, keep an open heart, you know. Um, I, spicy. I, I I I mean you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So sorry, I get no, caught no, no, up no. in the shipping wars. No, no, no. I I definitely feel that. You know, <laughs> and and a lot of people, and it's fine because um, this we've been building up to this huge fight between Okura and Ichigo for so long. But a lot of characters do feel like they take the back seat. Yeah. In, in this half of this arc, this is only half of the arc. Um, but uh, I enjoyed the fight with Okura. Uh, and there were a lot of other highlight moments with some of the captains as well. On top of, of course, the, the the for me, outside of like, you know, Ichigo's like new form, which was cool. His newest, uh, newest form. Right. His newest, newest form. <laughs> and, um, and everyone asking, like, is that Ichigo? Yeah. Is that really him? Right. I was like, you guys, you know, like it, it is him. It is. has to be. It has to be him. Right. Who else? It is Ichigo. Right. Uh, outside of that, I mean, you know, again, the Vizards, I'm living for them. They were the standout. Yeah. Part of this. For sure. Half for sure. For of sure. Of this arc. But um, the old Cure fight and Ichigo fight was really entertaining. I would say, obviously, more so from even uh, an anime point of view, because, mm. sure, in the manga, it is beautiful. And of course, uh, Kubo's character designs, like, and just the way he draws. He's just got such a kinetic sort of like style and, and everything, the, 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 these positions, these postures, these body movements, these poses that he like positions his characters in movement, the fluidity, all of it is like amazing to see in manga form. But not only was this animated in the anime, but it was also animated in at the beginning. It was like they used they reanimated it and used it as the intro for the Bleach movie four, which mm. is called Hellverse, I believe. Um, and it, it's movie quality animation. It looks amazing. Mm. And part of what I really enjoy about it, outside of it being like beautifully movie quality animation, is that because they're kind of using it as an intro to kind of set up what's going to happen in this movie, mm. they're, 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 they're re really just fighting. Like they're going through all of the, everything that happens on the fight you're getting to see every and having read the manga, you get the context of the the little bits and of uh, little bits and pieces of conversation that happened in between. But when you're watching the movie, they're not there. You don't have to listen to that. You just get to see like an uninterrupted, cool fight from start to finish, beautifully animated, uh, and it's really really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Really cool to see. Um, and yeah, I just thought for a second, like I know there are anime only watchers and manga only readers. But it did make me think, like, damn, that'd be kind of sick if, and it would and it wouldn't. But, you know, it's just a thought, humor me, that popped in my head. Uh, it would be sick if we got to see more of that in anime. And if you really wanted to to get, like, because, you know, that's that's that uh, medium strength, right? Movement. And I feel like a manga strength is its dialogue, right? Its story. So I, I, I think that uh, it'd be cool to get those deeper sort of back and forth moments of dialogue, like, in the manga. But then for the anime to adapt it, just like it's a fight, you know, mm. uninterrupted fucking brawl. Not, every, you know, it's yeah, not for every <laughs> not for every fight. But I just think for some, it'd be really cool. And if you want to know more, you go back and read the manga. More incentive to go do that. Mm, you're right. You know, just a thought because I really I, I thought I thought it was so beautiful. I even went back and watched it like three times in preparation for this episode because it's just it's short, sweet to the point. And it's mm. like, damn, you really feel like you saw. You really feel like you saw something after that. You saw the fight. Well, yeah. You yeah. saw the you saw the the, the right. To <laughs> well, if fight. you want to get literal, yeah, you yeah, you saw, a you fight. saw the fight. Yeah, you saw them fight. R right, right. But I was being you know a little bit more like trying to be at least a little more poetic about it. I guess. Oh, you, and you saw something. Yeah. Could use different or something. Well, you know, it's more vague. It's more dramatic. You know. Mm. Anyway, um, we also got to see a couple new bankai's. Which were mm -hmm. pretty cool. Soy Fan got her bankai. And actually, it was kind of crazy. I don't um, know if this other move that we got to see was technically a bankai. Uh, I, I believe it wasn't. And I just kind of want to, um, if you're audio only, I'm just kind of checking my notes for a second. Because <laughs> I did write down whether it was or it wasn't. But uh, uh, Shun Sui's uh, move. I think I, I have it here. Uh Kyokotsu mm. is pretty crazy. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Something I, I I really did not remember <laughs> and expect uh, because of his personality. And who he is a, well, I guess he is kind of a playful person, um, but he's also a kind of lazy person or yeah. seems to be. 
maybe just tired all the time. It just, you know, it just seemed so. He's listless. He's listless. Yeah. He is. It just seemed so like opposite of him. Mm hmm. But that's what also kind of made it really cool. At well, the that's kind of like it's like a parallel between like soy fonts too. It's like so opposite. Like she doesn't like using it because it's so like heavy and it's like you loud. know she can't sneak around with it. And yeah, it is so loud. It's such like a production every time she uses it. So um, it is cool to see like these people have these bond guys that don't necessarily like match them completely or like what they want to achieve. I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, other than that, the only two really like highlights that I wanted to mention up top, and there will be more as we go through, but uh, was definitely um, the king, that fight, the, yeah. the god of Hueco Mundo. Skull Knight. The Skull Knight, yeah. Uh, that fight was with Hachi Soifan. That was, out of all the fights, probably the, the best. Well, outside of, of course, like just that confrontation that Shinji had. And we get a lot, a lot, a lot of like reunions, not just with the Vizards and the captains, but with the captains and Tosin and Gin and, mm. and Aizen too. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed this fight with the the god of of Wekomundo. It was so yeah. Cool I, I mean, we got to seemed, see, yeah. we got to see that like lore, right? I mean, like I was just under the impression that when they got to Wekomundo, like it was Aizen's castle, like. All of that whole building was like just his, but well, it wasn't. Well, it was the king's, right? Kind of. The king didn't have a castle, but he called Huecomundo like his castle. Then where was he sitting on a throne when Eisen? And that's why they comment on that in the manga when Eisen gets there, because he, you know, kind of welcomes him to his domain, his castle, and he's like, "You have a castle with no like seal, you know, no walls, no ceiling," and he's like, "The sky over." Oh, Huecomundo. I thought there was walls, but just no ceiling. Because he wants to, like, symbolize, like, I rule it. Like, you know, like, see the on the horizon? Like, this is your mm. land. Like Simba. Mufasa. Yeah, yeah, like Mufasa. Mm. That's what I took it as. Because he does, like, there's a whole house building. Like, Oh, I've been wrong before. <laughs> uh, I have been. <laughs> Maybe wrong I'm before. wrong. But I was like, wow, there was a king. Like, that's kind of cool. Or, like, claiming you as a king. But, yeah. A king, a god. I mean, he really did. And it just, it just kind of begs the question. You know, there did seem to be some sort of rule or ruler before Aizen got there. Yeah. And we, when we learn more about the world and the mythology of this world, like it gets kind of like scarier and, and scarier. At first you kind of just assume that hollows are these sort of lawless, um, you know, kind of like they, they work alone mm -hmm. kind of monsters. But then you find out that long before Aizen got there, things were happening. They, and that's why to me, a lot of times, the way that Hollows or Espada, Zerankar are all portrayed being animal-like, being beasts, is because, I, and I think this is obvious, but it just feels like they are, they are just, they are still evolving. They are just maybe a little behind everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we kind of see that with Olkiora when Aizen shows up and he gives a lot of these Arankar, these these Hollows, these Gillians, these... Espada, when he gives all these, when he shows up and gives all these people power, uh, and especially with the Espada, when they gain that sort of like sentience and that power, mm -hmm. they start to question things. They start to become more curious. And you really do, I really do see them as like sometimes children. In the case of Ulkiora, which is crazy, him being so powerful yeah, and being such a threat. But at the same time, like, you know, being so curious mm -hmm. and being so confused i think by a lot of like genuinely like sometimes villains maybe will be sociopaths well, because they can't attach themselves to any emotion but he's genuinely like what is this thing that you guys a lot of the talking about? a lot of them are just like yeah like super childlike and just like uh majorly like naive like a lot of them are naive to like people's emotions or like hearts or like you know anything like that because they just don't know because they've never experienced that right right Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just cool to see and it's just every time even with Grimjaw every time we get more about this world before Aizen showed up and got to see the path that it was on you know it's almost yeah. like you know uh, if you're if you watch like Star Trek or something or like we we've been watching some of the Orville um, you know there's this like rule where you don't interfere with civilizations that haven't achieved space travel and it just like I don't know it seems like 
the Huacomundo was sort of a prim- a very primitive world mm-hmm. that given like without interference, it would have maybe had a natural progression that would have led to them ultimately to a different like point place. Um, but Eisen showing up really expedited that and changed like what what changed their the course of their evolution and what they they were going to become. Gentrified. Gentrified in, in, in like a the crazy way. The white man way. comes in to town and gentrifies Wakamundo. That's what we were saying in the last episode. It's been told. A tale as old a as tale time. Old, a tale as old as time. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah, that part was just really cool. And, of course, you know, character design, like, crazy. Like, I almost want to buy that manga volume with him. Because the, the, the god, the skeleton king is on the cover of the manga. And I almost just want to buy that manga cover. Or and that manga because cool. of its cover. Yeah. Um, and his ability was was cool too. Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> the only other thing I wanted to really comment on um, before we get to our highlighted comment and then go beat by beat is just Orihime, I guess. Mm. You know, you talked a little bit about her in the beginning of our general thought, uh, general thoughts. And I just think that for me, Orihime is a character I love, one of my favorite characters, um, which might sound odd to people. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But um, I really enjoy her and I enjoy her. As a character, I enjoy her heart. I enjoy, I, I really do enjoy her power. I, I, I love so many things about Orihime. So many things. Uh, Bro. <laughs> uh, um, but um, I just feel like, and, I, and again, this is, this is all purposeful. This is all hopefully leading towards Orihime having her moment. Mm. But I just feel like, again, she is, she is, it's, it's really hard to, to explain. And I was trying to think of exactly how I felt because I know that she has to kind of reach this point to be able to come out of it, right? To be able to, for it to feel like a victory for us, the readers as well, mm. and fans of her when she comes out of it. But here, and, I, and maybe I'm supposed to be frustrated at just seeing her, my heart breaks for her at the same time when she is desperately looking around after Ichigo gets a hole blown through his chest and she is screaming for help, the desperation and the way Kubo is able to capture that expression of terror is heartbreaking. But at the same time, like she is, I have seen her, we have seen her actively do everything she can to prepare for, for this moment. And, mm-hmm. and I know she's struggling with that because Uryu and Chad and Renji, everybody who is there, they've all kind of been training for this moment. And she has too. She just hasn't, I think, been able to achieve the amount of power that she wants to achieve. But it's also kind of not just that. It's just that she still just doesn't know what to do. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And like after the previous arcs of her like wanting to be in the fight, her fighting so hard to be in the fight, like as far as going to have Rukia like train her to be in the fight, like everyone was kind of advising her not to do it. And, you know, at the time we were like, no, like she could be useful. Like she can do stuff like, you know, she can she can learn and hopefully like she'll go into it and be prepared or more prepared than she would have been. But, yeah, just being I don't know, maybe because of what she went through in Huacamundo, maybe they did break her down, like seeing all her friends like fight to save her, like, you know, Ichigo especially like was that the breaking point for her? Because uh, you but, bring up a good point about, and sorry to cut you off, you bring up a good point about Okiora like brainwashing her. And I just feel like that's what Okiora was trying to do the entire time, but he was just really bad at it. Yeah. Like I feel like he was really bad He's at it. really, he like didn't even do anything. And I feel like it, it was really embarrassing. Didn't or and it was embarrassing almost. <laughs> yeah. It was like embarrassing. Like he probably left the room and she was like just like kind of like laughing. Right. Because it, like, I felt it was like that, yeah. really like the other two little bitches, the other two right. fucking bitches, like they I think messed up Orihime way more than he did ever. Right. Uh and yeah, he was he was it was low key like cringy, embarrassing, like it yeah. was not I was not scared it, it of was him. Cr- it was whatsoever. cringy because he thought he was doing such a good job. Yeah, he did. He was like, he was I so proud of himself. Mind, yeah. 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 And he's like, that's my prey. And it's just like, bro, you're not doing shit. Though. Bro, uh, it's you know? not working. You're, you're, you're not, not doing a good job. Yeah, it's horrible. I feel like his tactics didn't really affect her. And he tried again in this fight. And I love Ichigo for this. That he just shut it down immediately. And it was almost in the funniest <laughs> way. It was in the, in the midst of this like very serious battle. But it was almost yeah. in the 
funniest way, like if a real person like Ichigo was in this situation, he would say this. Um, and it was so real, it kind of took me out for a second because of how real it was. I was like, damn, Ichigo. Uh, old Kiora's, you know, there was a moment where Orihime protects Ichigo from one of uh, Okiora's blows. But it wasn't the first blow. It was like, you know, the second or third or whatever. And Okiora again stops what he's doing and like looks to her and is like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> uh, you know, you're helping him. But why now? Why didn't you help him the first time? Why the third time? Is that is that hesitation? Are you doubting yourself? And Ichigo straight up, almost word for word, goes, shut up. What does it matter? <laughs> Orihime, thank you. Thank you so much. Don't listen to this guy. What are you even going on about? Let's go. Like, and then he's just like. <laughs> and then he's like, fuck, dude. Yeah. But I then suck mine, at this. Yeah, he's like, okay. Bro, he sucks at it. Yeah, it's I, I don't really know if bad. that's intentional. If it is, it's even funnier um, because maybe it's supposed to be. But uh, old Kiora as a character is just so just funny to me because I feel like he thinks he's so good at what he's doing. He thinks he, he reminds me of like he reminds me of like a I don't know, like a like a neighbor that you have and they have like a little brother and he's right. just like super, you know, like he thinks he's like so cool. And he's, he's trying, got an older brother to kind of yeah, show and him he's all, trying this, to be all the ropes. Like, he's trying to be like all mysterious and like he's just like. I don't know. He, he just reminds me of like a little kid trying to portray that he's like big and bad and it's just not working at well, I mean, all. And that's exactly, that goes back to that thing of like them being sort of like kids, right? Like, yeah. And that's why I think it might be purposeful and why it kind of works so well because he is still like, he doesn't have a, a, a he doesn't have concepts of all these other things. He doesn't understand all these other things. He thinks he does. And so he's trying to like do what he thinks or what other people he's maybe seen other people do that has worked. And it's just like not working. And it's just so funny. And maybe that's another beautiful way to, to show that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, when Ichigo shut him down, dude, I, I was grinning from ear to ear <laughs> because I was thinking you were that. grim drawing. Uh, I was grim drawing ear to ear to ear. Yeah, I was going to try to like, ear. I was going to try to not one up it. I was just going to try to, like, take it to the next level. Yes, and it. Well, it's ear in Spanish. You know, that know. is a is a term I'm, I, I don't know. Dang it. I don't know. I, don't, I know mouth. I know eyes. Um, don't know ears. Damn. I know escuchar uh, is uh, listen, but I don't know what ears are. Escuchen? Well, that's just the <laughs> different how you, uh, what is it called? Um, what is it called? Like, when you conjugate. It's how you yeah, conjugate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how you conjugate it. So. Yeah. Uh, I just don't like how you think you got me right now. That was kind of crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah, um, right. You're pulling El Cora, Cora, El Cora, El Cura, El Cura. I just say El Cura, El Cura. <laughs> right, right, right. I think you were trying to pull El Cura, <laughs> and I think you did because you failed. Damn it. <laughs> um. Anyway, these are just some of my general <laughs> thoughts. Um, Megan, some of your general thoughts. So before we go beat by beat, we have a highlighted comment of the day. So we should definitely get to that before we move on. Our highlighted comment of the day today comes to us from Sila. Mm. And this is, of course, on our previous Bleach episode, Dun Kai episode. Um, and this is a really, really cool comment. They say, Scylla says, in a recent Q&A, Kubo answered a fan question about Aizen's backstory. His translated quote is, in most cases, revealing the villain's past is done so that the reader can emphasize with them and feel sympathy. I'm not a fan of this trope, so I don't make use of it. All characters possess different values, but I believe that the harder it is to accept the gap between them, the greater the villain becomes. Yeah, I think that's super interesting because we do see that in other stories for sure. I mean, we see it with, uh, you know, and every, pretty much every story there's a villain, you usually see their backstory and it usually is like a product of their environment or a product of their upbringing of how they became a villain and how, you know, they're trying to take back something or, you know, they were wronged in some way. Uh, so I could I could see that because Aizen is so like mysterious even now. Um, 
And even when we got that flashback of the past arc, it was just like, damn, like, you know, what drove you to do this? Like, you know, just like everyone's against you want it. You want to. I mean, I guess power. But um, so to, to, when he yeah. when he said that, I kind of like, oh, yeah, I guess we didn't really see any of that to me. Generally, I do enjoy being able to empathize with a villain or even an antagonist. I, I do like to and get enjoyment out of learning why they're doing the things that, that mm. they're doing. However, this is something that can be completely overdone where yeah. we know too much about them. I do think that some things need to be left a mystery because what we can think in our heads will be the scariest thing to us individually. Um, so hearing Kubo say it like this, I, I mean, it, just the way he put it, I, I really do think he put it so well. Me personally, I like a bit of both, I would say. I love a bit of mystery, but I also like to know, I like to know a little bit. However, in the case of Eisen, I think Eisen does, I do feel like I, get a sense for for who Aizen is and I do like that those stories with other villains exist that I can you know know more about but I do like that here um within this story there's a villain that that their past is sort of like up to you know speculation in my mm -hmm. imagination mm -hmm. Um, and who knows? Yeah, I like I like a, a, a bit of both like you said too. I do like when um a character is introduced and we don't get a backstory till much later or it's sprinkled in throughout like as a kind of way to like lead you towards the bigger picture um and you putting that together yourself and like you know theorizing like why uh but in this case i mean again it's like i guess eisen is eisen I, he's you know a bad guy i just think you know yeah it's, it's, it's much well that's the danger you can kind of i think that's the danger potential danger that you can come across if you're um, just making a villain a villain exactly. without giving him sort of any re rhyme or reason. Yeah. He could just feel like, oh, he's just bad because he's bad. Uh, I I'm not saying that's necessarily the case with, with Aizen. Um, and again, there are some characters that you can hear their reasons for doing the things that they do and you can still feel like, okay, this doesn't justify. Mm -hmm. I still don't really empathize mm -hmm. with, with you. Um, so it is a gamble either way. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I do think that sometimes, if I'm thinking about it a little bit more, sometimes Aizen does feel like he is bad to be bad. Yeah. Uh, but I also like the idea of trying to go through and piece together breadcrumbs to kind of like put together... Uh, you know, your own reasons for why he's doing the things that he's doing. Um, but I, I, I definitely, I definitely, now that I, now that I just talk it out more, mm -hmm. I definitely can see how he can come across, you know, as a bad guy for the mm -hmm. sake of being, being bad. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I do, I, I do like Aizen as a threat. I do. Um, I do think he is so, there is something so mysterious about him and he is so, menacing and he is like if he is just a bad guy who is bad like he's one of the good ones i guess one of the one of the the ones that are done well well he just he's just a villain that just like has no remorse whatsoever like he doesn't even seem human because he doesn't want to be human so right because there are things that we do kind of we see how far back you know this plan of his goes and all the other things all the seeds that he's planted and just the way his mind works he is more calculating he is more cold he is um he is he is he is a a, a really good villain well i can only imagine like you know he everyone is disposable to him everyone right. uh, you know uh, can be replaced but i can only imagine if like you know gin gin gin, gin like i can imagine if gin like you know got severely hurt or died like how he would like take that like that would be interesting because that's pretty much like his freaking like little brother like i do you think that he wouldn't on, care based on how Just he's treated bit. everybody how he's treated momo and what he's done to the espada here at the end of this but they never really like they helped him in different ways 
He was like, using Gin, them as a means to his end. Yeah, Gin is like he, he, you know, he was using him to do like bad shit, I guess. And everyone else like wasn't aware. So he like, cause he, you know, he had that like whole speech um, saying like, oh, you never really got to know me. Like if you got to know me, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Like maybe you would have seen these, these things planted all along. And I just feel like that made me like see more into his psyche, I guess. And him just like wanting to kind of be like understood for like the bad person he is, which like Gin is giving him that. Tosin is giving them that in a, in a different way. Yeah. Tosin, um, I feel like if Tosin died, he would care less. That, that's what I'm saying. If, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they have the same ideals and like they're working together. And But there is something more, I think, even to to Gin as well. Um, something underneath all of this stuff that either Eisen has put on him. I mean, he's been groomed. He was groomed into being this, like, bad person. Mm. So, and, and the, you know, everyone else is kind of, they can come and go. I mean, we see that literally in this arc. He's like, I'm done with you, slash. Yeah, it makes me want to kind of deconstruct, not here and now, but it does make me want to deconstruct Eisen more because this conversation, even just, like, kind of where it where it went has... uh that's just made me think about it a lot, a lot more, um, which is interesting. And this is, again, because we we don't know his intention. Um, and this is, I think, these kind of conversations are by design. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, wow, I'm kind of just lost in thought right now, but <laughs> yeah, I can appreciate both. Most of the time I do enjoy a character, a villain, an antagonist with a little bit of backstory, but I can appreciate a bad guy that's bad if it's done well. And I do feel like Eisen is done well. Yeah. Um, so shout out. That's our highlighted comment of the day. Um, also, just one, one uh, more quick note there. They talked about in a recent Q&A, and I think this is the recent Q&A that came out super recent, the most recent, where he Kubo answered a lot of questions. And just in case you're watching this and you don't know, we do do community lives every Wednesday. Um, and, uh, we usually cover anime manga related news, so we'll probably talk more about it or have already talked more about it on there. But, uh, with the m recent news that, uh, Disney, I guess, apparently did win rights to stream thousand year blood war arc. Um, there was also news that Kubo finally answered a question that a lot of people have been asking him to answer for a very long time. And that is whether if he was going to continue the series based on this, like one shot that he did. And his answer was also the most baller answer ever where he was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I like drawing things when people aren't asking me to draw things. And I was like, damn, Kubo, go off. I mean, I mean, yeah. he can. He's like, earned that. Yeah. Like, he's earned that. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I mean, he's literally like, you know, he's already had a full ass anime. Bleach is very successful. I mean, it's regarded in the top three. So it's like. And I don't think when he says that, by the way, like, I don't think he's talking about the fans at all. I think he's talking about the publishers. No, for sure. I mean, I feel like I don't know how it was back in the day. I mean, the demand was still there. I mean, I'm sure he still gets sent like letters and stuff. But social media and mangakas are just so fucking toxic. It's like not even funny. Like, it's not even like a joke. Like, you know, someone will go and be sick for months and then, you know, God forbid they like go on social media. And people are like, wow, they're just being lazy. Like, when is the series coming back? Like, when are you going to come back? When are you doing it? When are you going to when are you wh why haven't we had any yet? Like, this yeah. is it's just ridiculous. Like, I, I've been waiting for so long and it's just like I'm, I'm just like done. I'm just like it's like, bro, do <laughs> oh, you yeah, realize like, what you're saying? Like Hunter, Hunter, like hiatus X hiatus. Uh, yeah, Like, do you realize what you're actually like? This man is struggling He's to like, finish the manga, yeah. to, to, to write the manga, and you're complaining? Yeah. The story that you love, yeah. The story that you love and want to see the, your, this, this, that, everything that you love is from this person. Like, it's just so disrespectful, and I've just, like, had it. I've had it. Like, it happened with a Nana mangaka, and, you know, she's very, she's, 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 she's not well, and, you know, people are just pressuring her to finish it, and it's like, you already have, a, you already have the series, you already have the series, of course, it stopped, it's not finished, but, like, you need to chill, because you're not going to get it any other way, for, but from this person. Yeah, I do think that that energy, and it's hard, really, to sometimes, like, know where to direct it that frustration but i think if anything you know it should be directed towards like and i don't even know i would have to even look more into it but 
you know, this is a this is something that just like happens and it's is too it's too normal. This has become too normal that mangaka just are overworked and get and they're and and and, and, and you know, they they go through all of these like I, health issues. Yeah. Um and so I think like whether they need to get paid more so they can hire more staff, whether they need more staff, whether they need more time, whether that's the publisher's responsibility, whether that's or or, or that's on the publisher or whether that's on like I don't know. Um, but it's definitely not on the mangaka. Most mangaka work their fucking asses Bro, off. Bro, Oda said that so much so that they almost they almost some of them almost die for their art. Oda said that he only spends one day a week with his family because he doesn't want to get too relaxed. Crazy. Crazy. Let the let that just sink in when you talk shit about a series. Like this person is literally using their life to bring you this media for your enjoyment. And if it's not like to the quality or uh, the story doesn't go the way you want, you're talking shit about it. Yeah. I just, it makes me so upset. But Kubo saying that, it's just like, yes, that's how it should be because this is a creator. It's not like, it's just like a musician. Like, I don't have anything. I can't write anything right now. I just don't have that in me right now. And when I do, I do. When yeah. I don't, I don't. Like, you know, artists are so fueled to keep creating, keep creating, keep creating. Like, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. And it's just not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so many other people, I feel like, also compare, like, well, this person has been doing it for this long and they're fine but like it's case by case everyone is different yeah everyone everyone's different. Not, yeah but yeah kubo saying that is just like yes i mean you're not just pumping out this thing because they're telling you to pump it out and it might not be the quality that you want and it might be ruined yeah, or, and it might yeah, be he might not have a story that he's happy. like yeah happy with telling right yeah, now yeah exactly like you want you would rather like you would rather have this thing that this like creator doesn't give like really that much love or anything into it and then you're like oh this is just fine i want to consume this it's like yeah like realistically like come on and the and the crazy part about that is like sometimes that means that it might never happen like we yeah. might never get it but if we do it'll be so much more fulfilling and satisfying i think as a fan mm -hmm. to know that it's because it's a story he wanted to tell you not know? being pressured right. into publish it publicists publicist and yeah you know managers or whatever i don't know how the i don't yeah. know what what the tiers are uh fans especially i mean getting sent hate mail because you're not keeping up to, you know to yeah the well story. yeah and <laughs> I, I don't think that's you know everybody um and i really think that those people i mean you can't really call yourself a fan if you're you if can't you're, if you're to the point where you're like sending hate mail then to you, the person making the thing that you love yeah, yeah, yeah it's, you're, it's you're, you're you're too far gone yeah yeah uh anyway uh, I, love the, I love the tangent. I love the Sorry. tangent. Sorry. Uh, let's start going through beat by beat through the first half of the Arankar downfall arc. Um, so where we pick up is again. Shut up, uh, dog. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yami's back, dude. And I did not. <laughs> you know, if you've been watching these episodes for a while, then you know kind of our thoughts on Yami. And out of all the Espada, I mean, you have Okiora. You, you have Grimjaw. You know, to name up for you. To um, name up for you. And you choose fucking Yami's bitch ass. To be the ass, most to be, powerful To be one. zero? To be zero, yeah. Yeah. I was like, dude, I thought, we were, I thought we were done with Yami, man. And and uh, am I confused? Or when I read this, I was confused. Because he goes, he calls, he calls Yami by his name. Mm. And then he questions it. Do you remember that part? And he says, like, oh, you know, something, he just goes, Yami. And then Yami or someone, uh, the the other um the other characters are like Yami, like a question mark. It was really weird. I, I, Do you know I, what I mean? Well, I think Do you know was, what I, that yeah, part? I don't, but I, I I would assume it was just like Espada maybe can call each other, just like how they have the um how, how you know how you how you I forget the term for it, but like an Maybe. honorific, an honorific, oh. basically, where you uh, call somebody by a certain title, mm. uh, and uh, maybe maybe they were confused that like, like <coughs> if they who's were Yami, if they were lower in the ranks, just uh, ha hearing someone else call him that or something that could have been the reason. I don't know though. This was my best guess. Yeah, I, was I just don't a really remember that. Confused on that. Um, uh, but yeah, I thought we were kind of. I thought we were kind of done with Yami. Yami. He's back. He's, he's back not in, bad. He, Yami's not bad. Okay, this is a a, a little bit of a, an exaggeration. I said he's back and no, better than ever. Right. And right. bigger than ever. But I just think out of all the Espada, like I don't hate Yami. It's again, and I'm being over dramatic. But um, out of all the Espada, he's definitely not my favorite. 
Yeah. I'll say that. I'll say that. But we finally get the uh, Ichigo versus Okura fight. And what, what is really cool about how this fight begins really is, um, and I just want to note this too, uh, that uh, you know I- Ichigo is now starting to be able to see Okura's movements and, and questions whether that's because uh, Ichigo himself has become more of a hollow if Okura has become more of a human. And this is kind of oh. like feeds into the resolution of, of all of this. And um, why you laugh? It's like half half human, half... Paula, how do you see the cup? Ah, uh, I okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that was almost a year old moment, <laughs> but um, yeah. And, and Ichigo is obviously implying the latter for sure. Yeah, uh, and that's when Orihime, you know, they kind of begin to strike blows. Ichigo can keep up with his movements, but it's still struggling. That's when we talked about earlier. We spent a good amount of time on that, so we don't have to spend more time on it here. Mm. Or Orihime protects Ichigo, and that's when Yami wakes up, kind of starts cracking his arm. Uh, he gets ready to go. Uh, Ichigo is struggling to reach Orihime because there's those two, I, and I forget their names, but those two little bitches. bitches <laughs> those bullies. They're school bullies. They're like yeah. little school bullies. And they're like, I'm going to take what you took away from me. And I'm like, girl, it's really not that serious. You think Aizen is even thinking about you at all? Never. Never on even, your life. I mean, never on yeah. your life. Like, you're jealous for what? Like, a person who's never going to look your way? I see. If you I mean, guys it happens were, all the time. I feel like I see. I I can see if like Eisen, like you were like number you 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 were the number two to Eisen, but you weren't, and you're huh. never going to be. Like you think he's thinking about you right now? Like no, if you kill Ori, he made what difference does it make? Yeah, it's just spiteful. Yeah, yeah, they suck. They suck. To put it bluntly, they suck. Yeah, but. It's even more heartbreaking because or he may like save them after Grimdraw ripped them to shreds. She saved them and then was shocked at when they died and was like sad. Yeah, still. And we see still. that again. And so I'm saying this is why I love Orihime. Like I love Orihime because even after all the bullshit that Okura put her through, even though he wasn't very good at it, um, <laughs> you know, she's still like, yeah, I'm not afraid of you. But she didn't say it in a way that's like, you know, I'm not afraid of you. She said it in a way that's like, no, I. I don't fear you. Like, I'm not, like, you don't scare me, basically. Yeah, she said it to Okura, too. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that again. Like, she she cares. She has so much, like, empathy for these creatures. Yeah. Um, And it's, you know, it it doesn't waver. Mm -hmm. What's terrifying, too, is that panel where they're pulling, like, the hands are coming from the shadows and they, like, pull her back. And the way Kubo is drawing, like, the muscle, the face muscle being pulled, it's, like, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, It's pretty... um, it, 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 it's not hard to read, but it is like, oh my God, this feels so much more real. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, then Yami kind of shows up, destroys them with ease, destroys them almost right away, which is a little satisfying, uh, but even more satisfying. Uryu jumps through a hole in the that wall. Yami made in the wall and uh, lands a blow with an anti Aronkar mine that he got from Mayuri. Yeah, he goes, I got a, I got a, uh, anti. That was an anti Iran car. I can never pronounce it even still to this day. Iran car mine. I got I got an Iran car mine. Uh-huh. They're like sick, dude. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I got one from Mayuri. They're like, dude, that was sick. There was that really funny moment when you know he kind of he kind of delivers a badass line where he's like, I was given it by I was it was given to me by a mad scientist, uh, and then Ichigo said something to him, and he's like, what? I got the Aronkar yeah. mine from Mayuri, who was down there. and uh, <laughs> you know. That's what I mean. He just, like, he says, like, a bad ad that he's just, like, yeah, that's the I'm going to tell yeah. you every how I got it. And it's, like, anything, did, you, did I cover everything? Yeah. Is there anything else you need to know? Uh, it was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, here he, here he comes again, Udiu being the fucking goat that he is. And, again, just, uh, this man, this man deserves more. This man deserves more. He does. Um... This is when Ulkiora breaks from the canopy. This was a pretty intense moment. Telling Ichigo that Espadas beyond Quatro are for, forbidden from releasing within it. Meaning that their release is so powerful that it could destroy this castle. It could destroy mm-hmm. this building. Uh, and Uryu, once again, has been tasked with keeping Orihime safe. And we see her here start to really struggle more and dive deeper into despair. Yeah, you know, like, this is what despair. Internally. This is what despair re- lo- really looks like. Yeah, what this is what true despair looks like. I was like, yep, yeah, she's really she's spiraling. She's spiraling because she just feels like, I mean, she felt like that before. Like I really can't do anything, but 
more so in this moment is just like, yeah, I can't do anything. She also just doesn't. I, I, I do like she, no, she just also just doesn't know what to no, do. No, exactly. Cause she, I mean her her skill set again, like she's not like a like a fighter. Like that's not what she does. Like she can heal and she can like put up barriers and stuff, but I mean that's why it's like she doesn't know what to do because like in this moment there's not like anything that particularly like her skill set could help with. I mean, Ichigo's a monster. Well, we see, and this is what I've always been well, I you know. Because, again, uh, bits and pieces of what happens after this, I do remember, but not not everything. But I think what 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 she saw in Hachi, right? And and after especially seeing how powerful Hachi was in this yeah. battle, we've seen that someone with her abilities can can do damage, can be an asset mm-hmm. in battle. She just hasn't maybe got that got that far yet, figured that out yet. Uh, or maybe she's just feeling frozen in this moment. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, but I do think this is also when she has her moment. It, it feels earned. Um, yeah, this is when Ichigo starts to get wrecked. But they talk a lot. We learn a lot about Ichigo's will and his spirit mm-hmm. to continue here. And I love this line so much from Ichigo. Because they're, I think in this fight, you know, some of the lines that Ichigo delivered were the the best lines he's delivered, I feel like, in, in a while, for me personally. Mm-hmm. Especially when he shut down the whole Ulkiora thing. Like, mm-hmm. that was just awesome. But here again, when is being bad at what he does and trying to, I don't know, get inside the mind of Ichigo and I saying, mean, like, maybe- aren't you scared? Like, I'm so much stronger than you. Aren't you scared? And Ichigo's like, of course I know that. Well, I also took it like him, like really genuinely asking, like, yeah, aren't you right. scared? Like, I'm way more like what you're doing is not reasonable. What you're doing is not smart. Like, he's almost trying to be like, hey, dude, like, I don't think you should be <laughs> doing this. Like, really think logically about this. And he'd go, you know, it's like logical and like someone who's like thinking what their feelings. Because he doesn't understand feelings. Yeah. So they're like, that's the two, um, the clashing, like fighting styles or like will i guess yeah um, one's like logical and one is uh emotional emotional yeah because uh, but this line and you're absolutely right and this line when, when ichigo says you thought i'd give to you give up to you just because you're stronger than me and just the, the you know his the expression he wears as he says it uh it was just a chef's kiss moment for me this is when uh, Orihime, who's been taken down, kind of like has that moment where she begs Uriyu to take her back up because she feels like Ichigo's going to need her help. And Okiura performs a second release that he hasn't even shown Aizen yet. Mm, he's the first to relieve. He's the first to reach the second stage release. Yeah, I don't think this is something that we've seen at all or mm-hmm. even knew was possible up until this point. And again, his released forms, both of them, very, very cool. Okiura was always, even as a kid, was one of my favorite. I would say now I might have, uh, as far as character design goes, he might not be my favorite any longer, mm-hmm. but he's still up there. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, I was like, this guy is the best, the coolest this character. This guy's it. You know, because, you know, me being an emo kid in high school, oh, eyeliner yeah. dripping down. You know, yeah. I was like, this is my guy. Is yeah. guy. <laughs> I feel like I looked like uh, Okiura on the inside. Oh, yeah. I've seen a picture. You could have. I kind of did. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Kinda you did. you dyed your hair and everything. <laughs> I really did. Bro, that's great. That I dyed my hair? Yeah. How long did you do that for? How long did you keep it up? I just did it once. And then it faded, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it jet black to reflect my inner, the inner me. Uh, the young inner me. <laughs> You're black. <laughs> Darkness. Yeah. Um, this is my second release. Yeah. This yeah. is my second release on my new album. Check it out, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So... That was a cool moment too. And they, you know, again, they look so fucking cool. This fight looks so fucking cool. Ichigo does get a hole blown through his chest though. And I, okay. How? How? People be losing arms left and right. People be getting blown through the chest. Yeah. I was like, how is he going to come back from this? I mean, he re- I, I re- do I- appreciate what Okiora said because I was getting to that point too where, you know, 
this is this happens in Shonen all the time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I made a joke and then people <clears throat> corrected me because I uh I said like I've never I've never seen an arm I've never I've never seen an arm get chopped off in an anime or manga and thought like oh that arm's gone forever and then people were like what about Shanks literally in the first chapter of One Piece loses his arm and never gets it back and I was like okay fair point um, but there's it other people that lose their arm <laughs> in One Piece and they get it back well I know I know, I know. but my, my point was that like it just happens all the time in, in many different stories yeah. But what I appreciated from Okura in this moment was he said, I can regenerate my limbs, my arms, my legs, my skin, uh, my eyes as much as as much as as many times as I want. But my internal organs like those things like I cannot regenerate. So I, I at least I'm so glad he said that because at <laughs> least in that moment, it made me feel like, OK, well, he's not indestructible. He's not. There is a way to beat him. So. Mm-hmm. Then how how can okay I understand that but like Ichigo's heart got blown out, right? Yeah, he got blown out. Ichigo got blown. He got out. blown out. Yeah. Um. Well, a couple things. Uh, well, we obviously know that, and and I also think that this is going to be something that's going to be explained more as we read more because mm. there are a lot of things that even Ichigo himself is a little uncertain about right now. Yeah. But uh, we do know that he. Being a deputy soul reaper, we know. Um, we also know that his dad, like this, is something that his his dad has been a part of for a while too. So, um, his, his anatomy already is not that of a of your average human already, right? High schooler, high schooler, yeah. Um, mixed in now with the fact that he's got like he's part hollow, yeah. Um, hollows can regenerate. Uh, most of them, the more powerful ones, the Espada, can regenerate. But you're absolutely right to that. And I'm going to give you my best guess. The The hole also at the same time looked very similar. It was a little bit bigger. But it looked very similar to the hole that, uh, that the hollows had. I was going to say that, yeah. Um, but this, it's so interesting how this beam comes out of him. And I don't know if we saw, I don't, and I don't think that beam or anything because Orihime looked pretty shocked too. Yeah. Like it didn't come from her. Uh, so I do think that it is, I, I, I'm just, a, I don't know if I'm even right, but I just don't even want to say certain things because mm. if I'm, if it's, if it's, if it's wrong in the first place, oh, then I would have just said something and it wouldn't have even, because I'm not even confident that even giving you this information would make it more, make it make more sense um but i get what you're saying i get what you're saying i get what you're saying because he got that he got that hole blown straight through him i guess maybe because his new form like he was able to heal it way faster and maybe that is to also you know show that his regeneration maybe he can't maybe that's okura's thing maybe okura as powerful as he is being uh the cuatro espada uh is uh as powerful as he is, he can't regenerate his internal organs. But for whatever reason, Ichigo maybe in that state is more powerful and powerful enough to do that. But it could be because of mm. other things, too, that we may or may not find out soon. But it was crazy still, nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. Orihime, this is when Orihime loses it, dude. And again, the facial expressions, she's she's really having a hard time right now. And she's screaming for Ichigo's help. And Ichigo hears her screams and goes into a beastly Vasto Lord or Vasto Lord a demon mode state. He's on his demon time right now. Demon mode. Rukia points out that, you and know, he gets long hair. Yeah. He gets a little mullet action. He gets a little mullet action. I was like, I like mullet, Ichigo. I kind of do too. Yeah. I kind of do too. And Rukia points out later too, it's like, oh yeah, his, and you know, it's kind of crazy. I, I really didn't pay that much attention when I was younger reading it. But when and Rukia says it here, too, like, oh, yeah, every time he's worn that mask, like, it's always been slightly different. Mm-hmm. And it was something I, you know, noticed more this time around. But as a kid, right over my head, didn't pay any mm-hmm. attention to that. So this is another form. Um, and again, it, it, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like, it looks so sick. It looks so 
fucking sick. But in this mode, he is not really conscious. It's not really him. Yeah. And that's what I think also plays into the regeneration, too. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much Ichigo as it is maybe this other thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah. The battle that ensues after this is absolutely insane and beautifully animated at the in, in the intro of uh, movie four. But when Ichigo, because of this form, is able to ultimately defeat Ulkiora, though they go back and forth for a while and it's amazing to, to see and to watch. But he just sort of leans over him with his two horns yeah. and blasts him yeah. at super close range. Yeah. Uh, it was, and he's just like, do it. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. He's like, yeah, you didn't have to tell me. Well, he yeah. was more like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he yeah. blasted him. Yeah. And he got blasted. <laughs> he got blasted. Ichigo got blown out. <laughs> and blasted. And Ulkior got blasted. <laughs> it was a time. It was a time. You had to be there. That's why Orihime wanted to go back up. He's like, I got to see this shit. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, to cut back to Yami, Yami just kind of jumps down and fucks with everybody's fight. You know, Ruki is kind of <laughs> doing her own thing. She's got her own shit to deal with. She's handling, though, like our girl does. She handles. But she Yami holds just, it down, yeah. yeah. She holds it down. Yami just jumps down and kind of fucks shit up, you know. Yeah, it's Fucking like, Yami, okay. Yami. Shami? Sh- Shami. <laughs> Shami. Is that your Shawi, but yeah, Yami? Yeah, it didn't really rhyme. Uh, uh, you tried, and I appreciate so much. Thank I appreciate you. the effort. Thank you Megan. so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, is this around the time that Ichigo is like, I don't want to win like this? When is that? Uh... Pretty much right here. Ichigo right. in oh. this like berserker mode stabs Uryu. That was, yeah, that was wild. I mean, things happen though when you're half hollow. Like, sorry, like mistakes are going to happen. Like, Uryu should not, Uryu should not be going up to him when he's in that state being like, Ichigo, listen, listen, you got, yeah, <laughs> yeah grabbing his arm. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, just yeah. let, and he's like, don't mutilate the body. Ichigo. I was like, that's not Ichigo. Like, you keep asking, is that even Ichigo? Like, it's not Ichigo right now. Let him come too. Let him do his shit. Like, he should have done that because he would have killed him and he came back and i get it right he should like it's I a wild it. animal like do not go to a wild animal like and try to and he's not it's, he's not in the thought, right state like, we've already defeated it you don't need to he mutilate didn't, the though. body but he didn't though and i feel like they never do they never do and the, the, the cut first the head time, off, the cut second the legs time, off, yeah. cut the heart out. Bitch, like you kind of have to. You have to to make sure. And even that's so you're saying it, on it was Udi's fault for being stabbed. I mean, just say it. It's it's not his fault. Just it's just say a, it, it's Megan. a learning it's a learning lesson. He survived. Oh, he learned his lesson. Yeah, don't don't be doing that. <laughs> don't be yeah, grabbing Vasto Lorde's arm. Yeah. <laughs> trying to reason with him in that That's moment i was like oh my god and then ichigo was so butthurt about it and i understand but even Uryu was just like not like i can't believe you ichigo i can't believe you've done this to me like it ha- everyone's in a fight everyone's in fight mode right now like it's we're yeah. up against eyes and like things are gonna happen like things mistakes are gonna, are gonna be made like sorry um and yeah it's just that ichigo gets really in this like butthurt mode and he can't focus on anything else but like his mistakes and he just has to push forward and, like, learn from them and, like, grow, mm. you know, instead of, like, letting it affect his, like, performance. Yeah. I mean, maybe he needs you as a coach. I think so. I, think, I mean, yeah. Rukia does a pretty good job. But when, but she's when not she's there. not there, it goes all the time. <laughs> the moment she leaves, he forgets everything she told him. <laughs> and Yeah. It's so Reverts true. Right back. Like, she just needs to, they just need to be side by side. They just have little walkie talkies on them at all yeah. times. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know why they don't do that because even she knows, like, oh my god, fuck. As I'm soon not as she there. gets back, she's like, what happened? What happened, Ichigo? What happened? Come yeah. here. Come here. Talk come here, to Papa. Me. Yeah, come here. Talk to me. What happened? What did you do to you? <laughs> what did you do to Ichigo? Yeah, what did you do to? I- you stabbed him. You stabbed. Oh it's okay, my god. Ichigo. It's okay. Like you were protecting your friends. Like it talks to him like that. Yeah. Um, he just stoops down to her level and he's just like Ooh. he is you know in this moment though yeah he, you know in all seriousness he is hard on himself for sure and, and that does get in the way of a lot of I think his it is a part of his growth it is a part of his journey I do think it gets he gets in his own way a lot and I agree with what you said however in this one instance in this like because this was happening kind of throughout in this one instance when he is realizing when he does come to and sees everything that happens and realizes uh, that he doesn't remember anything. 
And he has that moment of realization where he says, like, I didn't want to win like this. I don't want to win like this. Like, but that. Yeah, go ahead. But there's no other way you can win, Ichigo. Like, there's no other way. But like, that is the is, only way for you to. And you still didn't beat him. The thing is, it's almost. It's in that moment, it might feel like, or to other people maybe watching, it might seem. Like that's the only way to 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 win, but that's I not. No. But Ichigo made this promise. Ichigo vowed to protect his friends, and that wasn't him. I know, I know, I know. And he wanted to win through his own means, and he wanted to win the way he wanted to win. But a win's a win, and you got to move on. This yeah. is we're going up against the big bad here. You know, this is a person that's trying to kill you and your friend. This is a person that's locked Orihime up and has been fucking pl- trying to play little mind games with her. I'm with- trying to, let me just try to, okay, let me and just I, honestly I try to think about it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know. Let but, me honestly uh, try to think about it. I'm just kidding, Megan. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. So sorry. scary. <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. If I start talking while you yell, I'm start really trying no, to think no, about I'm it. No, no, I'm sorry. I was, I was trying to be funny. I understand, but <laughs> 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 you should have committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have committed. I should have. I should have. I should have. I didn't have the heart to. I didn't have. The heart. Uh, For real though, go ahead. Go. Um, I understand. I understand. I mean, I'm just playing not devil's advocate, but it is just like Ichigo. Like you know, let like you got one. Like let's go. Like. You know, you're using your abilities to your advantage. Like, you're protecting the people that you want to protect. And, of course, stabbing Ishida is not part of the plan. But Ishida should learn to not go up against wild animals in a time where they are not themselves. And, you know, he should know that. Um, if he was rapping with him, like, any other day and he was like, oh, damn, that was crazy with the Mastodon, I'd be like, go for it. Go shake his hand. But he just, it, you, they both were like, is that even Ichigo? Because he was so, like, you know, scary and, like, on his demon time mode. Um, and, you know, I just, I feel like Ichigo shouldn't be blamed for that. And he shouldn't blame himself for that because that, that wasn't him. And, like, I know he wanted to, like, he wanted to win as him. Mm. Um, but you do, you can't against against. This well, other why... demon. I mean, you have to go on your demon time mode to, fe- to defeat a demon. Like it, it just it, it just makes sense. That's what I was saying. Plus like, what, if I'm really two. trying to like think about it, and I'm really trying to put myself right in in a similar situation, okay? And I'm just really like I'm closing my eyes. I'm imagining that I'm in a fight with somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And let's say this person like hurt somebody I I really cared about, right? And I show up, and I'm gonna be honest, okay? And I show up, and I'm like, you know. Don't you ever like, you know, put your hands on anybody I care about ever again. I will I will make sure that you can never even use your hands again. Right. And I vow to kind of go there and destroy this person. Right. <laughs> and then right, as you destroy. do, as you do, destroy them. Yes, as you do, as you do, um, as you do, as you this do. person in this made up scenario did a very terrible thing. Um, and I go to like, you know, pull back my uh, my fist. And oh, you're I get, getting physical. Immediately. immediately i'm getting physical yeah. immediately Damn. so fast Shit. and um <laughs> and, and and he strikes me first oh and he hits me he gives me a black guy oh. and then he jumps on top of me starts beating the crap out of me right shit out of you yeah and then i'm like oh shit and then the person i care about who he hurt is kind of like on the side like no no stop and then, stop fighting yeah, i would feel pretty embarrassed in that moment yeah. i would feel pretty ashamed i would feel honestly like a loser in that moment mm. but let's say in that moment i also black out I black out. I do like a kind of like a moon night thing where I'm like, oh. you black out and, you, and then you like, you're like, you black out and then you just have, yeah, like moon night. You have the abilities to like defeat him. Right, I black out. Oh, and then I wake up. Yeah. And that guy is on the floor, you know, bloody. But so is like an innocent bystander, <laughs> you know? I don't know how I would feel. Honestly, I, I went into the scenario kind of prepared to be like, I wouldn't give a fuck I, as long as I, you know, took care of that guy. Uh, but if I hurt like someone else, like I would be like, damn, this kind of sucks. Like it just kind of doesn't feel like a win, you know? I mean, but to that example, imagine all of your other friends in the bar. Okay. It's in a bar now. I like it's it. It's at a bar. I thought I was I'm envisioning sober. I don't a, even know why I'm there. I was envisioning a bar fight. I was okay, envisioning okay, a bar okay, fight. Okay, 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 Cause okay. it's like group of people, you know, okay, this guy's like probably it. like an asshole. And this bar is called, um, Hueco Drinko. Hueco Drinko. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 
um, the tequila. half Mexican side of me feels like that was a little racist. So we're Drinko. gonna go. Uh, let me think of a, um. Let me think of one. So yeah, like yeah. uh, Hoka Mundo. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Tequila. Uh, it's just, it's called Las Noches. How about that? Las no- there we go. Las Noches. Thank you. How about that? So that Las Noches. Better. It makes sense. I was uh, like, you know, I was Drinko. having a, Yeah, yeah you're, I was you're having conflicted. A, I was having a, a war. A war of races. The other half of you, the, other, of- the other half of you got, rose up a little bit and the other one was like, you're fighting internally. <laughs> there was a war of races <laughs> yeah. inside of me right now. Bro. Your lineage, feeling, bro, bro. Your lineage was wild oh, wow. right now. Was, I, I saw the conflict. You were like freaking Ichigo right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One day over. Um, but yeah, you're, you know, it, it, let's say like all of your other friends like you know are also fighting a, like let's say the person that hurt the person that you care about is it like a group like they're like a like a biker gang okay. and all oh, your other okay. friends came with you to try to beat them up too because they don't agree with what they do or what that guy did and one person gets hurt because oh. maybe they went up to you and said hey man don't do that don't in my blacked out state in your blacked out state because I and relapse and I'm blacked out. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Sorry. No. Sorry, sorry, no. Sorry. You're just blacked out from rage. Okay. 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 When you frame it like that, when you frame it like that, in you're the not moment, by yourself. I wouldn't feel uh, conflicted about anything in the moment. In and the l- other guy that was hurt was just like, you know, it's okay. Yeah. At least you got the bad guy. Yeah. You know. Now that you frame it like that with other people there in danger as well. In the moment, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't re- reflect on it in that moment. But I'm not Ichigo, clearly. Ichi, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, I'm not. So, but I was just trying to really like put myself put yourself, in that position yeah. and, and uh, try to try to really see how I would feel. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But for Ichigo, I mean, yeah, it, it is admirable, right? And it is, it is, maybe it's who, maybe it's who I should be. Oh, maybe it's who I should be. Black, I mean, he's willing to out and- even like he's willing to even like slice himself up in that moment to make it fair again. Yeah, that was a little much. I'll, I'll slice my arms off. I was like, damn. I mean, well, we saw, you know, not to compare because they're two totally different stories, but not to compare one piece to bleach. But in the Katakuri fight, a similar thing happened. Yeah, but that was because someone else interfered. Not because... Well, someone else did interfere. I guess. Ishida. Well, no, someone else inside of Ichigo interfered. Oh, uh, I guess so. There's just layers to it, you know? Yeah. We're just, we're exploring I, the layers. I get, I, I understand the sentiment. I understand, but again... This, well, you made me see it different through real world, uh, yeah. real world lens. Comment below if you... Mm-hmm. Would you care if you blacked out <laughs> and knocked somebody out? But then also hit someone in the process. <laughs> right. Would you care? It happens. Yeah. Would you care? Given that same scenario that we just walked through. Yeah. Please let us know. That would be <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, old QR does get back up for a little bit, uh, but his organs aren't regenerating. So this is the end of Okura. And Okura asks Orihime if she's afraid of him. And uh, she says she's not. And in Okura's last moments, he reaches out and seems to finally understand what heart is. And that was a really beautiful moment. Yeah, I love that panel. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I do. <laughs> Don't take that away from me. I loved it. And I like the symbolism of, you know, he didn't understand what heart is. So he's like, I'm going to take your heart. And he blows like a hole in his chest. Yeah. And then it grows back and he goes, maybe, maybe my heart can grow. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's bad. He's a bad guy. Yeah. He's just, he's... He's he, he's, brought down he's the bad. wrong path. He's bad. But yeah, he just, he just... By he someone motherfucking named Isaac. Yeah, he just, yeah. He, he likes to he's groom a lost people. Soul. He's a lost soul. Yeah. yeah he's a lost soul. Mm-hmm. Um, That's when Yami, we cut back to him, and he reveals that he is the zero Espada. Uh, Only and, Espada to have charged... Have number. Well, his number changes. The number changes. That's what I wrote. I, was, I, I thought it said charge. The stronger or the more angry, yeah. I guess, the more powerful he gets. And it goes from zero to nine, not one to, uh, not one to ten, zero to, wait, did I say that right? Zero to nine, to zero to nine, not one to ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, who said it was one to ten? Yeah. That's, that's some, my Yami voice. That's some earth people shit. 
You That's guys some land are, of the living people. You guys shit. are so stupid. Kind of sounds like Joe from Family Guy. Oh. Hey, Peter. <laughs> that's y- <laughs> that's Yami. Yeah. Um, this is when we come back to the captains, and the captains are facing off versus the various Espadas. The king reveals to Soifan that the Espadas all govern a different form of death and that he represents, I don't even know this word. Do you know this word? Hmm. Uh, senescence? Senescence? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look the like the band that's saying right. I'm gonna listen oh. to uh, uh, I'm gonna listen to Bring that me song. To life? I'm gonna listen to that band after this. Um, I'm gonna look it up. You keep talking, so I don't feel so I feel at least a little bit okay. uh, less dumb. Yeah. So this guy straight up, I loved his design. Um, he looked straight up like an old man, and then he transformed. Yeah. Into a uh, a skull creature, um, with a big old robe and. I think it was so funny, like the moment of Omida and him, how he was like gonna be the decoy for Soifan, and how he just he, he's getting like he's, oh, he's standing funny. behind him, and then he runs after him, and it just yeah, I loved that. It was so freaking. Well, funny. I mean, the, the literal. I mean, you know, you figure this out obviously from context clues, but it literally, I just wanted to, you know, look it up. It literally, it means the condition or process of deterioration with age. Loss oh. of cells, power of division and growth. That makes huh. sense. That's exactly what he does. I, I just, you know, I feel a little smarter that I added another word to my vernacular. And that's another big word right there. Good. Well, you know how to say it, though? No. Yeah. No. That's the all. problem. Like, you can know words, but if you don't know how to pronounce them, it just kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, you look, still look dumb, huh? You look even probably more dumb for trying to use a word that yeah you can't that pronounce. you can't say <laughs> right yeah, yeah right, right, so just right, don't right. try you can just use like another word that you're more comfortable with Deter- age deterioration deterioration there you go cool <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway uh, <laughs> I'm dumb uh yeah I'm no, joking I, I know I'm feeding know. into it. uh but uh, yeah that was a really funny moment when they're going back and forth and I love soy font too she's uh, but out of all the captains, like I really love and appreciate her a lot. I like her a lot too, and I do like an ice queen. But she is more of an ice queen than she is a soon today. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I just want a little sliver. Like the only one she really cares about is Yoruchi. Yeah, yeah, and everyone else can. But that's that little sliver, right? That's yeah, that I little... guess, yeah. But when she's not there, I'm just like, damn, you're mean, girl. Yeah, like yeah, poor Omida. Like, damn. Um, so w- it, when they're in the middle of this battle, we get to see this king, this God, as he calls himself. We get to see his ability mm-hmm. and the way that it moves. I mean, it literally does like representing death. This represents aging, right? So when he releases it, the way that it just like Sui Fon just dips her hand into it mm-hmm. accidentally and immediately. Her hand from just her palm and her forefingers are just turned to bone. That was that was visually like, I don't know. It was it was really scary. Like, it, yeah, it, I mean, there was something even primal. I mean, it was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it was scarier than like getting a hole blown through you or I because I, I mean, it was just it looked like, again, it just this energy, this thing just. Just, her hand was just dipped into it and not like you know maybe with like any other acid or anything like that it would take a little bit of time for it to eat away but then she just like dipped her hand into it and it was like immediately gone it kind of scared me a little you bit you fall in you're done you're done um so this is when we cut to Hitsugaya who we see is battling uh the shark uh, and he has a cool moment too, where he talks. But they're going back and forth. She's water, uh, or they. Um, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. never tell uh, with bleaching. You never want to assume. They uh, use water. He uses ice. They talk about my your strength is also my strength. And yeah. Your, if you would think weakness. that your strength would be my strength, then let me tell you that you didn't even think about my strength being your strength. So that's where I have the one up on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, "Don't give me lessons." Yeah, but I'll give you a lesson. Lesson about water. Yeah, and she goes, and they go, "Ha ha ha!" Well, the water <laughs> is actually my lesson that I'm going to teach you. Right, 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 and right. And right. it just goes back and forth for a little bit. We'll and there. Uh, Hitsugaya reveals that the entire sky is under his domain or the domain of his zanpakuto, and uh, that was 
awesome. That was a really cool moment, and that spread was, that was sick. Awesome, awesome, because it was just like a you know back and forth of teaching lessons, and then it was like, well, let me teach you the ultimate lesson. Yeah, the sky. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, that's when that moment happens between Soifan and Omida uh, asking him to become a decoy. So we find that's when she uh, first does her bankai. We first see her bankai. Yeah, she's like embarrassed. The hornet thunder whip. <laughs> she, it, well, she also is like, I hate this thing. Yeah, she's like, like, I don't like to okay. use this thing. It goes against my, the code of, yeah. you know, of their group. Yeah, um, and I like, it, you know, she's all saying like, you know, I don't I don't like it. It's kind of annoying and, like, you know, and its attack is too, you know, too flashy for an assassin. And the minute she sends it, it's just like, yeah, like the biggest thing in the world. Uh, then we get to see uh, Lil Annette and Stark combine. I Soul Eater vibes. Like, I love it. Oh, yeah. I kinda, love it. Yeah. I love it. And they're like banter when they're talking back and forth. It was like, oh, my God, I love this so much. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I didn't even put that together. Yeah. Like the Meisters and the weapons. Yes. I was like, oh, because I was thinking, like, how are they going to combine? Did I didn't even think like because, you know, we do see, you know, Zampacto. I was like. There's no way like she's gonna be a weapon. Like there's no way she can be like a like I they're gonna like merge into like a bigger person, like Steven Universe style. Like I don't know. And then it turned out to be like the the weapon. I was like, that's pretty sick. And her being cognitive still and being able to talk to him was cool. Yeah, that was the fun part. Yeah. yeah. Uh I love that too. And I and I really do like them a lot as uh characters and yeah. as a spot. Uh Stark is just like so cool and just like so matter of fact and just like, well, you know, I'd, you're pretty strong, too. Yeah. And he likes to play it, you know, cool. But yeah, he was a very lonely guy, a guy so lonely that he split his own soul just to have somebody to hang out with, which is what, uh, you know, if I had a Lil, Annette, Lil Annette is, you know, if I had a nickel for every time you wanted to split your soul. How many nickels would you have, Megan? You'd be rich. Of course. Nah, but do because Would you be rich? No. I because you you really you really only want to split it max one, two times. And then no, after because that, you you're like, that's too many people. No, you can't. Okay, so why you say In you said about if I had the thought of oh, like just a thought, the if you thought, had the yeah, thought. not that if I was actually gonna because we can't do that in real life, Josh. Never say never, do your minds maybe not open wide enough. Wide enough? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Opened my brain up, uh, but yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty sad. Yeah, he just seemed very lonely. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a sad moment. Yeah, uh, he's up against Jushiro and uh, Shun Shunsui, and uh, we learned a little bit more about Jushiro's abs- uh, absorptions on Pacto, which was really cool mm. and cool. Just for the, honestly, the same reason that Stark says, "Oh, it's I like that." It's he literally took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. He's like, I like how it just doesn't absorb things and it kind of goes through these talisman and then you can like alter its power and like things like that. And I was literally like, me too? Me too. <laughs> me too. Ditto. This is when a character that we haven't seen uh, for a while and honestly I kind of forgot about. Beach but Wonderwise. Wonderwise comes through with a giant hollow, we'll call it for now. Uh, but he looks like he almost has little like Menos masks for toenails. Yeah. Or Gillian masks for toenails. Uh, I do too. Uh, they were, it was kind of disgusting. Well, not kind of, it was very disgusting. Uh, and he lets out like a blood curdling scream, yeah. freeing Aizen, Gin, and Tosin. Uh, and this was the same eye, this giant creature's eye was the same eye that all the captains saw when Aizen first left Soul Society. Uh, I do have to say though, and again, not a criticism. I just, it's just an observation. But, uh, I do have to say, though, I, I really did kind of expect these two, because of the way Wonderwise was sort of like being uh, amped up to be, especially when Uda Hada, remember that panel? Mm-hmm. Where Uda Hada, like the look on his face and the look mm-hmm. on Wonderwise's face. And the way just he was sort of mysterious and everybody was just kind of like, oh, my God, like, you know, don't the weird kids here, like, be careful. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just thought he was going to be this like crazy, powerful person. And he is. He is. Definitely is. But I thought it was going to be a lot harder to take him out. Bro, so easy. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't so... It was easy at first. You know, maybe it was like, oh, they had me in the first half. Like, maybe he's been acting weak just because, I don't know, he just has, you know, doesn't have his bearings. Um, But, I mean, maybe that just goes to show how strong the Vizards are. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. like she put up like a crazy fight. Just like, bye. Like, I mean, they're strong. I mean, they're go- they're they're having games about who's going to go up against that huge hollow. And she's like, oh, you let me have it. Like, so dope. Like, you know, they're strong as shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a great showcase to show that because we've kind of known because of the history and the backstory. But, you know, seeing them fight for the first time or seeing them fight for like the very first time, like right. actually, actually, like it makes sense why we would. You know, he would maybe use Wonder Weiss as an example of like the power scale. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, that's when the Visards do show up, like you said, and uh, we talked a lot about this in the beginning. I uh, was so happy, and from this moment on, like I just, I was just blowing Same. through, yeah, chapter after chapter because that is just how much I I love this group of characters. Yeah. Um, that's when they say an enemy of an enemy is an ally. The different reunions that they all have. I thought Lisa's was very touching. Uh, it was that was a little Sundere moment for sure because of oh, what yeah. happened to her in the, in the past arc. And yeah, she yeah, yeah. tells uh, Shun Sui, I, I think is his name, that uh, you know I'll show you how powerful. You know you haven't changed much. You know mm-hmm. yada 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 Sundere, Sundere, Sundere line after Sundere line, and then says like I'm gonna go show you how powerful I've become. But it was just so on brand for her character and was so cool to see them back together again. That was one yeah. that, that warmed my heart. And I also like how Shinji was like, anybody else? And everybody else was <laughs> like, nah, we're good. I love the um, Hiori and Hitsugaya. Like, they literally oh, they're could dynamic. be siblings. Yeah, they're like, dynamic, they're yeah. so similar and they could be related. It was so funny. He's like, are you a kid? Like, why are you you're a captain? Like, why are you wearing those robes for? And he's like, girl, look how short you are. Are you shorter than me? And then she's <laughs> yeah. like, and yeah. she kind of just like stood there. Yeah, they're cool. Um, that's when we talk about getting to see all their masks. Shinji goes right after Aizen. Bro, immediately. Bitch ass. Awesome. I was like. After he talks to Yamato, he goes, the next stop is Aizen. Straight for the kill. Uh, and the rest of the Visards, you know, they sort of, they handle fucking business, dude. Oh, they yeah. show up and they handle show business. Show out. Yeah. Uh, they show up and they show out. Dude, Mashiro goes after Wonder Wonder Wise. Mm-hmm. I love her. She's I awesome. I love, love, yeah. love her. I love her just whole deal. I love her outfit. It's just, you know, super... Her not energy. Super Saiyan, super, Sentai, Sentai. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, totally, yeah. like, Power Ranger shit. And she just is, like, just so fun. And I love her dynamic um, with... I don't know. I forget his name. Oh, um, yeah. I, uh, I, I, you know, there's so many names to keep track of. I did write his name. Uh, Kinsei. Kinsei, yeah. They're so cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was, this was awesome. It was awesome to see her just sort of bounce around. Yeah. And with her bubbly personality and just take out Wonderwise. Komamura and Tosin reunite. And uh, this was a, another like kind of really powerful moment. Like I said, not all of them just happened between the Vizards. Yeah. Um, this was a moment that. Bro, this was, this is kind of where like their first interaction is where we see at the end. Well, yeah, Am and this is kind mistaken? of the reverse of a situation that happened earlier. Yeah. And even Komamura comments on that. He said, like, I never thought I'd be, like, blocking somebody from your blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, and they they are, you know, men of honor. Well, Komamura really is. And loyalty. And so, I mean. Goat. Yeah, I mean, he really is. I really love him as a character. He's awesome. And I love his dialogue with the Visards, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, I love this guy. And he's another guy that just does not get a lot of, like, screen time. But, like damn dude even when he first saw him and he was talking to them they're they're both outcasts you know yeah. they're both kind of like oddballs and and then you know in, the, in a weird way they kind of like bond over that for a second he's like well i'm not gonna ask you much about your thing like you don't ask me much. you know you seem like you're kind of weird too so let's just like not talk about it and let's just like do this and he's kind of like all right let's do this you know and it was just like a small moment but i really enjoyed it and uh tosin's a bitch uh you tosin know. is a Tosin's frustrating, dude. He is frustrating. Because he just seems so arrogant, dude. Like, he's like his sense of justice is just so much better. So clouded. It's so polluted. But he, he believes that his moral compass is, like, pointing truer north than anyone else's, you know? Bro. Like, it's very, like, he's, he's the worst. He's yeah, the worst. at least, like, just, like, you know, relish in the fact that you're bad. Like, he genuinely thinks he's not bad. Yeah, no, yeah. And that's what makes it even more frustrating. Yes. It's like, but you're on the bad side. What they're doing is bad. Well, actually, uh, you know, my 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 feelings and my morals, I'm like, oh my God. Boy, if you don't Yeah. Uh this is when we get to see 
uh, that Hiyori Hitsugai and Lisa Dynamic, which was awesome, like you said. Yeah. And Hachi versus the god of Weka Mundo, a.k.a. the king. This was the highlight fight for me. Oh, yeah. The highlight fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no questions asked. Of this part of this half, this was awesome from start to finish. And I was so invested. Um, more so than in any other fight in this part. Yeah, and we get the ending because, you know, he's putting up a fight and he wants Soifan to use her Bankai, right? Uh, Hachi does. Yeah, we're right around the, is that, yeah, 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 yeah. the fight. And just like the end of that fight when he just goes like, oh, you know, I do promise to put Udahada in a force field. Right, for like a month, which is nothing to him. Still, how is he going to get Udahada? Like, Udahada, like, is he just going to agree to Udahada that? Udahada would probably just do it. I don't, I don't know. Um, it was like for a month. Like, it was something like silly, like a silly amount of time. I took it as like, damn, like, how is he going to get him to do that? I thought he just was like I, I, so I took desperate. it as her, like, again, like, we talk about her being an ice cream, but, you know, she might have some, some soon today tendencies, I guess. But her being like begrudgingly helping and, and using this little thing as an excuse to use it uh, right but i'm like so far, help, read uh, the room like read right. the room look what's right. going on i know you don't like it. i know it's against your code but like this is a different circumstance like i'm sorry like yeah, you're gonna have to use all you can use right you know like damn yeah yeah uh it was kind of funny though i i kind of laughed in that moment because she's like yeah lock him up for like a month and he's like you got it like enough said and then he's like Poof. yeah because uh, they trap him, and I think I mean everything that he used. I mean, all, all of it was so amazing. How they were trying. He was just experimenting. He was trying different things, and how even one was kind of based on a hunch because there was something protecting his exterior. So he, like, he like basically like teleported his own yeah. arm, disintegrating arm, like inside of uh, the king. It the was king's like, like epic. Ha, 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 ha. yeah. He's just laughing, and he's just like, oh, die, 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 and he gets so upset. And that's when we get his flashback, which we also talked a little bit about in the beginning, too, uh, about when Aizen first showed up. Yeah. The king does, though, after this flashback, try to go after Aizen, and Aizen just easily just disintegrates his weapon with with ease. But again, I think that this is very important because he also showed this king his blade, and this is something that's going to come into play later and be very important later towards the end. Another highlight, not as much as the Hachi, but again, I love these guys. Love uh and roses uh yeah and guns and roses love and roses yeah they're awesome their hollow mask might be my favorite really like, they have to be like so they're just so oh, so sick uh yeah and i don't know if we said it before but yeah comment your 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 favorite visor mask did we say that because i want to know mm, i don't because if so. i had to pick a favorite favorite out of the visors i, I might just Shinji. go Shinji. yeah well you're biased i am biased <laughs> i am like, biased i like love and roses i mean they're not my favorite visards but their masks alone like are just so so sick like i saw them again and i was like oh yeah fire yeah i yeah i mean i would say i love loves more um but uh i mean all of them it's so hard to choose because all of them are so sick yeah uh, and loves mat like this giant mallet that he has too like awesome uh, but they go uh, they go toe to toe with the Primera Espada, uh, who is using these like flaming, exploding like wolves, which was pretty crazy. Yeah, the wolves were kind of cute. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean they're very dangerous. You get a <laughs> little too dangerous. close, trying to get a little pet in, you get you get blown to bits. I mean, wolves. That's the you case. Get blown to kibble in bits. That's the case with real wolves too. <laughs> that's true. In yeah. the real wolf world. That's true. That's true. That's true. You go too close to a, a wolf, you might get nibbled on. Yeah, they're Chomped huge. Dog, yeah. 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 If people forget they're like, oh, same size as dogs. I'm like, you understand how big a wolf is? Like wolves can get pretty big. They're yeah. like its head can be up to here. I don't know if that's every wolf. I mean, this feels like a twilight wolf to me. No. I I I'm pretty sure they're pretty tall. Uh I I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure. I'm I'm This is know. a twilight wolf. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> oh my god, Megan, I don't even want to dive deeper into that. It's because of spoilers. Oh. What did you think? Spoilers. I thought it was because of Twilight spoilers. Moving on. I don't know. Maybe I thought you know, you were team Jacob. You had like a little you had like a little affinity toward uh, Jacob. And no. you were like, and I'm not gonna say anymore. Team Jacob. Wow. Starting a lot of wars on the <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You're like you should or he Jacob. Uh, Bro, he turned wild. He went 
he went so he was so on track to be like oh yeah you of course you would root for this person and then he just went completely left and you're like huh i mean edward isn't like the best but i mean just the way he was treating everyone including bella i was like uh-uh mm-mm. so we'll fit him oh Oh, there you go. Spoiled Twilight. <laughs> so many people watching this right now. So many people were like, damn, dude, fuck. I was ju- I was going to watch it this weekend. <laughs> fuck. I literally went through all the trouble to stop myself. Um, this is when we get to see uh, Shun Sui's Kokyokotsu. Kokyotsu. It can turn a child's game into reality. This was so interesting and such a fascinating concept to see get expanded on here. Um, and the way that it works, too, and, and specifically the the... Well, first how he comes out of the shadow, but yeah. then again to see that it's, there's more to it than that and how they start naming colors and everything and the color that you're wearing. Um, if it's like equally as dangerous for you than it is that person, the more powerful it is. Like just a fascinating and interesting and really cool concept. And I, you know, it wasn't as simple as like affecting gravity or yeah, ice. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 it was complex. Like, it was more complex and I really enjoyed that. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, that's when we see that Primera's flashback uh, of loneliness um, and uh, um, they're able to uh, defeat. Uh, Shen Sui is able through the, the, the color, the color move. Is I think able it was to, white, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, or black. I think it was white mm-hmm. or black. One of them said white, the other said black. But then he kind of takes his jacket off and uh, says his color and then he just delivers that finishing blow. Chef's kiss. So sick. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, that's what Eisen is like. You know what, dude? I'm fucking tired of this shit, man. Bye. I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready. And he fucking goes up to this like shark espada and just kills them. Yeah, kills her. Immediately. Or them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like immediately slash. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Bitch ass Eisen, savage Eisen. Back yeah. at it again. Back at it again. Of dude. course. And meanwhile, Mashido's getting a little cocky versus Wonderwise and her mask, because they're all telling her, like, dude, take a break. We also learned that, you know, when she was going through her holification, that she was able to, you know, Be the control longest. it yeah, mm-hmm. and, and wear it for the longest amount of time. So she's a little cocky. And right when she's about to deliver a very important finishing move, her mask cracks. But that's when Kinsei jumps in to, to help her. Sorry, I'm not mature enough to take it easy on kids. He's so like, sick. Woohoo! Yeah. Protect your girl! Now, um... Brings me to a heartbreaking moment. Yeah, and I and I don't really remember if this is something final or not. But it no it, way. Uh, I don't believe it. But Eisen, meanwhile, is provoking. You know, and again, keep in mind everything that he's put all of these Vizards through, and he's you know they're all sitting there. They've all kind of defeated their their chosen Espadas, and um, and uh, Eisen just starts he starts poking at them. He starts, uh, yeah. he starts toying with them. But he's actually good at it, unlike Okiora. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Okiora yeah. was trying to be eyes and he just couldn't. Yeah, he yeah. could not match up. Uh, and uh, he's able to... Everybody, you know, Shinji's kind of aware of this tactic and is telling everybody, like, don't let him get to you. And Hiori's like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not stupid. And he's like, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And then he says one more thing and uh, Hiori runs after him. And uh, gets sliced clean of in half. Of course. In half. From like waist. From the waist. So her torso and her legs just go flying in opposite directions. Uh, the heartbreak on Shinji's face too. And he kind of similarly to, to Orihime is like screaming for Ichigo's help. Like, But in, in, in a way he is also like screaming for Ichigo's help. But also he kind of feels like, man, if, if, if Ichigo was here, that'd probably mean Orihime would hopefully be here too. And maybe Orihime can fix yeah. this, you know? Um, but uh, I was, I, I, yeah, I didn't remember it until it happened. And then I don't remember. Uh, it can't. I, I don't know. We'll have to keep reading to find out. Uh, then we finally cut back and we see Ichigo versus Yami. Uh, and he, you know, Ichigo's trying to, 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 to put on his sort of the same mask that he's been putting on, but it's different now. It looks different. It feels heavier. Something's off. Something's not right. He's not able to maintain it for as long. And even later he goes to kind of like wear it again. And it doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't want to, uh, form. Yeah. And I did like, uh, just like the line, you know, it's like Grimjaw, you know, Ulak, 
Ulkiora. Ulkiora. Noi, Noitoro? Yeah, Noitoro? he kind of names all of them. Yeah, yeah you're setting like, yourself they're... up for, uh, for a hard time right now. Why? You, you, you picked a line of dialogue that has like three names that you don't know how to pronounce in it. Yeah, but I'm just trying to... <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm trying just... to just uh, talk about a moment that was important to me. I so it's so just sorry. funny that you try to like gaslight me. It's not gaslighting, into... Megan. It's not gaslighting at all. No, that all. was like literally... Cr- I'm like just That's like, oh, you know, I'm getting through it. Word. I'm already done with the quote. I'm already done. I was going to move on. And, you, you know, you're trying to set yourself up for failure right now. Like that was crazy. I'm I'm sorry, but I mean, you just, I mean, you know, maybe you could have said, he listed all these Espadas names and then said. Because what what Espadas? Be more specific. <laughs> Okiori. Exactly. Okiora. Sorry. Fuck. Damn. All right. You got me. Anyway, read the They're quote. They're all trash hey, no, compared Megan, to me. Megan, Megan, why don't you read the quote again? Don't fucking patronize me. <laughs> why don't you start over? They're all trash to me. That's what he says. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if he's just saying that because, you know, they're all fucking cocky bitches but oh I, I believe that he's powerful i mean yeah i guess but well that's when Pyaki <sighs> and, and uh, kimpachi show up to help ichigo out and yeah like i said kimpachi's looking real lean and they go to town on him mm. and their dynamic together is very funny too yeah they double teamed him and they have this they double team him. they double Kiora, teamed him. i mean got, you could only be so lucky you, well yeah i was gonna say speak for yourself but speak for me too uh I was going to say, Ulkura, uh, Ichigo got blown out. Mm-hmm. Um, or no. No. No, no, no. Uh, Ichigo got, yeah, Ichigo got blown out. Ulkura got uh, uh, busted on. Busted on. Uh, busted up. Bust, yeah, got busted. Is that what we said? Uh, anyway, and Yami got double teamed. Yeah, double teamed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and their dynamic's so funny because they have this contentious relationship. They have this back and forth. You know, they kind of like, you know. You're in my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. I can't get a good hit on him because you're talking too much. Yeah, I, I could watch these two guys together forever because he's yeah. like, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, well, because you can't do that. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'll show you I can do that. <laughs> but also, Byaku is like very classy and Kim Pachi is very just like primitive and brute. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 I'm a sucker for that dynamic. Um. So they show up, yeah, and uh, Mayuri brings out this gate that's going to get Ichigo back to the world of the living. Unohana volunteers to go with Ichigo and sort of starts taunting Mayuri about Udahara too. Mm -hmm. Because they're they're saying it's like an experiment. He's saying, like, this gate is an experiment. Like, you shouldn't go. And she's like, I just thought, you know, you'd be a little more confident. You know, I feel like if Udahara were to, like, do something, you know what I mean? And she starts kind of, like, just getting under his skin. And he's like... He's like... "Hmm." (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Like, well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And Ichigo's a little reluctant to go, but Byakuya reminds Ichigo that it uh, he is the deputy soul reaper of Katakura, so it's his. Yeah. Get your fucking priority straight. His duty is to that town. Exactly. Get your priority straight. Yeah. Your friends are safe. Like yeah. you got two captains who are yeah. also, you know, debatably, I guess, your friends, but definitely not as close to being friends as like your real friends. I mean, and your fa- and your uh, fucking family. Well, it, it is a fake katakura, but still, like, if anything happens to that katakura, the real katakura is going to get, you know, teleported That's back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Get your priorities straight, Ichigo. <laughs> uh, and so Ichigo does uh, end up end up going. And um, it's in this, on their way, that Unohana tells Ichigo that he's the only hope against Aizen because he hasn't seen his Shikai. And that's the only way his power can be activated. Uh, this was a, a really cool moment because we saw Aizen, you know, this was part of what Aizen was, or why Aizen was able to do what he's been doing for so long. Yeah. Uh, because he, you know, he, he keeps getting the jump on people and showing him this Shikai, which is ultimately able to to give him sort of like, for him to be in control of all these situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because he either underestimated Ichigo, I think that's exactly the reason why he underestimated Ichigo uh, Ichigo didn't see it, so he kind of is because of this the only only hope. And there's a, another funny line between all three of them, or a funny moment between like uh, Mayuri, uh, Byakuya, and Kimpachi. They're all kind of going back and forth, specifically Mayuri and Byakuya. And it's kind of like kind of I forget exactly what they say, but Mayuri's like Byakuya is like, oh, it sounds like it sounds like you believe in Ichigo. It sounds like you think you can yeah. really do it. And he's like, it doesn't seem like you. And he's like, well, you, you know, that doesn't seem like you. You know. 
they kind of because Bialkia says something similar uh, in return, and uh, it was just like this little back and forth. Again, their dynamic as time goes on, you start to understand them more mm-hmm. because again, in Soul Society, they they were just these like powerful people who showed up and were powerful people. But once you start to understand more, and the you know the past arc too, exactly, yeah. It, you're you're you know the, these moments just like hit a little harder and have a little more to them or feel like they do at least um and uh you know also on their way unohana is talking more to ichigo ichigo talks about being at half strength and she kind of freaks out and she's like oh my god like i was thinking that you were on in this is all in her head like i was thinking you were on captain level half strength but you're like half strength like you're on captain level yeah. at half strength yeah uh, your power's only half. She says, so I'll heal you on the way there. And, you know, even, even her is like, damn, like, first of all, who is this guy? And maybe, yeah, maybe like we can do this. Like, you know, we have a chance. We have a good chance. Yeah. Um, we're almost at the end. We're at the very tail end. Uh, Yami goes into what I'll just call his like ultimate form. There might be another form after this though. Who knows? <laughs> uh, out of, out of anger. And we kind of like, it kind of leaves it kind of leaves Byakuya, Kimpachi, and Yami there. Uh, the this half of the art kind of leaves in there, uh, and we kind of end on this conversation. Aizen is talking to Shinji about trust because Shinji is very disgusted by, yeah. uh, obviously disgusted by Aizen, and and you know, Aizen Aizen's rebuttal is like, I didn't ask any of these people to trust trust me. I liked that. Yeah. I like that whole speech. He's like, I asked them to follow me, like not to trust me. And it's just like thinking about how much he is able to take advantage of like people. Like, you know, you can't really follow someone and not trust them. It goes hand in hand. Right. You know, uh, and, he, and, and Eisen's half of the speech, too, at the end, where he basically then starts to talk about gods and, you know, gods are born. And he goes off on all these things about trust and trust being shouldered on uh, all these people. And but the way he ends it is like probably one of the coolest finishing lines in an argument, in a discussion, in an epic monologue. He says, uh, and if you don't trust me, uh, then you can trust him when he like talking still about like talking about that God. Like, and if you don't trust me, like, you know, I'll show you and you'll trust him. But, you know, I, it was just it was more it was put better than that. Obviously, <laughs> uh, I'm no Kubo, but uh yeah, I was like, damn, Eisen, like that. I mean, I, you know, you're the worst, but I, that was like, couldn't have been said in a, in a cooler way. Um, and Komamura then is talking to Tosin about Bankai. Again, they're still going back and forth. And he's like, well, I never thought I'd have to cross blades with you, but uh, I guess it's time we both kind of go Bankai and, Dude, and do this. And I Tosin's laughed. like, <laughs> I laughed so hard because he's just like, you know. What do you say? He goes, um, yeah, I didn't think I had to do this. So, you know, you want to go full out or you want to show your bond Kai or something? And he goes, I, there's nothing more I would love. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, fucking idiot. You fucking piece of shit. You fox f- freak, dude. <laughs> you fucking... fox bitch. You... Of course I'm not going to use my bond Kai, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's like, I have something better. Yeah, I have something better than a bond Kai, you dummy. Bond Kai don't make me laugh. Ha ha. I was like, damn. Cause he set him up. Like yeah. he set him up where he's like, You want to do this? And he's like, There was nothing more that I would love. And he tried like, you know, he said like a cool line and now he just feels like an idiot. Like he made it feel like he's stupid. Like Yeah, 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 yeah. It was sad. It was a sad moment for him. I felt bad. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was kind of a, more, I was like, kind of embarrassed. Please fuck this fool up. Yeah, I was dude. embarrassed for him in that moment, for sure. But But I mean what this is implying then is that uh just like we've been able to see the Vizards, just mm-hmm. like we've been able to see the Espada because of this power that Aizen is able to give everyone uh, and through holification was able to give Shinji and, and Hiori and like yeah, I said, the yeah, Vizards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it implies that he has done something similar to Tosin and Gin, who were already uh, pretty strong, but it's also done something to them so that now they have either gone through holification or some form of it and mm. themselves, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is going to be very crazy to to see. And that is where the first half of this Arankar downfall Yay. arc ends. Um, so, Megan, now that we've kind of gone through everything and we kind of, you know, took our time going through it, 
What do you, do you have any other final thoughts or closing thoughts that you'd like to share? I mean, like I said, I, I definitely enjoyed the the back half more than the front um, just because of the visor. That was definitely like highlight, highlight for me. I feel like all of them uh, fighting alongside the people that we've been seeing fighting. I mean, it is just like a breath of fresh air um, for this arc and like for what's to come. Uh, and I am very curious, like, you know, Hiori, like, I wonder if it is solidified, like, that'll be super sad. Um, and to see, like, you know, even maybe Shinji and I- uh-huh. Aizen, oh my god, I forgot his name. Shinji and, sorry, <laughs> Shinji and Aizen, like, go at it, or, you know, maybe even Ichigo and Aizen, I don't know if, like, that's that yet. I hope Aizen just is like, well, we'll be back, and leaves again. Like, no, that's I mean- what I hope. Like, I hope something is resolved here. I hope we see the end of it. I mean, we are coming towards the end of like bleach until the thousand year blood war arc um and i don't know i mean i you know you don't have to answer but you know like eisen remaining the big bad for how much longer i don't know until like something meets it's you know that it comes to a head um with the conflict i don't know if he remains the big bad until then um but it is interesting to see uh, you know everyone's dynamics and stuff it's really really cool like i love the visor so much like i think out of all of bleach like they might be like a highlight in mm-hmm. general for me just yeah. because I, you know, I feel like I had the most time with them. I feel like I know the more, I, I know yeah. more about them than, more than any like, of the other Udi captains. And even Chad and or even to an extent. No, that's like, what I, that's why I feel so like, you know, close to them more so than anyone. And like knowing what they went through and knowing what they continue to go through and like helping Ichigo. And like, I, I just love them so much. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm really, really hoping we get to see like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Rukia is taking a like major seat back. I felt like Renji kind of in this first Renji, half. Renji, bro, like all of them are just like gone, and it, you know, of course, and we didn't see any. I don't think Chad really in this. No, either. no, and I, you know, of course, whoever I see it was, you know, I like them, but like, damn, you know, like my one, of, like couple of my favorite characters, like, are just kind of chilling. I mean, I would say definitely Renji, Ishida, Rukia. Uh, pretty much all of the Vizards, <laughs> um, Orihime, Chad, like those are, those are the ones I love to to see on page. Um, so I'm curious to see in the, in the in the second half how much they'll come into play. But yeah, that's I mean that's pretty much it. I mean again, it is a lot of fighting. Like I said, you know, I'm not sure how this conflict will resolve. I don't know if at the end of this arc it will or the next arc. Um, but any more like. It doesn't feel like a drag necessarily, but it is just like, is Aizen like going to ever be defeated? Like, is this like the end? Is this going to continue on into like the next two arcs? You know, you mm-hmm. feel me? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I won't know until I read it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I agree with almost everything you said. I mean, the Vice Arts, especially on reread, are just my favorite. And um, anytime they show up, I I just I, I experience this excitement that I, I I do feel when I see other characters like when I see Byakuya and Kenpachi show up and they've done that twice where they've kind of showed up in a badass way and uh, both times I was like you know like I said smiling it again. and <laughs> grinning from ear to ear uh, but the Vizards man it's on a whole nother level and I do attribute it the same to the same thing like just the past arc did so much like so much in in such a short time and and really I think shows like how competent Kubo really is at telling a story. And, and, you know, he was able to get me invested and able to just like deliver so much lore in this short amount of time. And and what it did for this character, these characters going forward and the story going forward was like, that was a very needed, a Definitely. very needed arc. And it was so cool to see. I mean, because we know Aizen was like, you know, he betrayed everyone in Soul Society. Like everyone was kind of, not everyone, like, you know, obviously people that were in on it were in on it. Um, but, you know, to see him do that like hundreds of years ago, like, you know, I don't know how when the Vizards, the timeline lapse, I don't know how long they've been hiding in the, in human the world, world living, yeah. Uh, living. Yeah. I don't know what that time span man is but just to see like he's done this before on been a, like a hundred years or something it, he's done this before on like a much lower scale mm-hmm. to people that yeah you know i mean it happened and you know Udahara had to pay the price for it 
um but to see it like to see them like they were the ogs of aizen's like their wrath for aizen um has been stewing and growing and that's what i love to see more because this is all kind of like fresh to everyone of course to everybody it, else they've been recently betrayed and um, they've been like stewing in like one of these days like aizen's gonna get it like and this is the day yeah like that's what makes me feel like fired up like yeah like everyone of course wants to defeat aizen but like like, damn, they have so much. They have a lot more riding on it, you know? Like, yeah. they've been waiting for this moment for, you know, I think it's been 100 years, but however many however many years it's been, like, they've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And so to finally see them get that moment is is really cool. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, going forward, you know, I I I am uh, really looking forward to to getting to the end of, of this arc. Um is there like a reveal or? And um, in my mind, in my mind, there is. A, 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 in terms of like, depending on like what you consider to be a big reveal, there is a big reveal that I am still waiting for. Mm. Um, but I don't know if we're going to get it. We might get it arc. at the we might get it at the end of this arc. I'm mm. not I don't remember it exactly. Okay. But um yeah, I mean it's just crazy to think that everything that's been happening up until this point has been Eisen has been the one kind of pulling the strings like and it's all coming to a, a head. Uh it's looking like because of what was told to Ichigo um that uh it's going to be Eisen and and uh and Ichigo like their final battle. It's looking that way. It is looking that way and you know I do hope to see uh Eisen uh Shinji fight too. I would love, yeah, I would love to see that as well. And if you know, again, and I'm, you know, trying to trying to dance around certain things, obviously for the sake of Megan who hasn't uh, read anything past this, but you know, it is just either way you look at it, right? It is like you know, if for whatever reason Ichigo's not able to defeat Aizen, then what does that mean? Yeah, right? what does that mean for the story going forward? And if for whatever reason he is able to defeat Aizen, what does that? What does that mean for the story going forward in a different way? Like, what's that new threat that's exactly. going to be like even more threatening than Aizen going exactly, to be? Exactly, exactly. Because Aizen has been the villain for almost, I mean, so far, the entire story, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it is all coming to a head. And I'm really excited to reread for myself the remainder of this, but also to experience what comes after uh, and, and just sort of the ramifications of everything with you uh, going forward. Uh, yeah, because we get closer and closer to getting to that thousand year blood war arc um, with every episode. Uh, I really did enjoy this half. And it's hard to talk about the first half because you get a lot more perspective when you look at it as a whole once you go through the second half. But initially, again, like most of my thoughts that I shared in the beginning are the same that I feel here, um, which is, again, the Vizards and, you know, wanting to my big hope. And I, and I can't remember if or in what way it does happen, but is wanting to see that Orihime moment. Um, wanting to see moments for specific characters. Like, you know, I want to feel, like, more excited about Ichigo as a character. The same I do with the visors. Like, I find myself having that, like, longing feeling of, like, wanting to connect more with, like, the main character. Right, absolutely. And I feel like I'm connecting more to the side characters, which should mean that the more you connect with the side characters the more you care about the main character and i just feel like that for me right now is just kind of lacking and not to like ruffle any feathers or anything um no no no, no because i i want to say like i still think ichigo is a, is a great main character a great mc and the ruffle feathers part is because like not to compare it at all so just before anybody gets triggered by me even saying this at all just my reason for saying it is that like in the case of like my hero, right? Yeah. Where, you know, we yeah. talked a lot about like, I don't think it's the same thing as Deku because I found at a certain point, Deku to me, it is different. And just if you if you don't know, we've shared some of our thoughts on it. And we're not caught up on my hero, but I personally got pretty far into the manga. Um, I Farther think, than me, I think. Farther than Megan. And I think the uh, anime is either at or maybe a little past where I got to in the manga at that time. All I'd say is I found myself getting to a place with Deku where I was like, dude, everybody else is so much more interesting than he is. And it wasn't just that, though. It was also that, like, bro, Deku, like, Deku was just starting to become, like, sort of annoying to me. Like, it, for me, it just became more of just like a repetitive thing with Deku. And I know. Right. He I, wasn't moving forward. It felt like it was just kind of stagnant. And 
you know, that's just my opinion. Of course, I have not finished it. I don't know where he's at right now. I've heard some cool things about like, I don't know, his suit and maybe his abilities like right. going forward. I have heard some really interesting things. Um, I would say that Ichigo in the beginning for me, like I, I really, really liked him. Um, I still like him, but I just felt myself, I mean, because it's like we didn't have that many characters to kind of like compare to, I guess. Uh, but, you know, just dynamic with his family and like, you know, Rukia and his friends. And yeah, I, I am in no way, shape or form. Please do not get my words twisted. I'm in no way, shape or form. And Saying will Deku ever compare Ichigo, Ichigo to, to Deku. What I'm saying <laughs> is that Ichigo is not Deku uh, at all, because while I do agree that we do get a lot more and do tend to kind of spend time, especially recently. Like you said, the story is going through phases, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and this phase of this story does seem like it's focused a lot on all the other characters, and there are a lot. There are so many. Uh, and, and it's a good thing that all those characters are super interesting. I do not feel like Ichigo is a Deku at all, but I do feel like we're just not getting as much Ichigo time uh, as I would like. Like, I feel like I haven't got to, like you said, see that side of him. Uh, I feel like I've kept anything we have seen of him is just this has been the same side of him, still kind of struggling with that that those things, which I know he'll be able to overcome. Um, I just feel like, I just feel like, I would like to, like you said, see more of Ichigo, not necessarily just always in a fight. I would like That's, to see yeah. him more like out of a fight, but like more time spent out, like because like. The past arc was like, it was really no fighting. There was a lot of scheming going on. And then there was like maybe a what you would call a fight uh, towards the end. But that's what, you know, ultimately led me to care so much about everybody. And with Ichigo lately, it just feels like the only time we get to spend with him is when he's in a fight. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they are fighting against, you know. And that, yeah, and that bad. makes sense. And that's why I'm not comparing them. I'm just, it's, I'm just saying. Yeah. But that's, yeah, exactly. Like, I feel myself longing to see, like, that side of Ichigo again and all of like you know his character and how he moves forward is for the sake of his friends is to protect the people that he loves and that hasn't been that hasn't been watered down or, or taken away from him at all it's just i find myself gravitating more towards the other characters because they're given more time with not only fights you know they are given more time with like you know strategy it's not like a back and forth ichigo i feel like every time i see him lately which makes sense because of the story um it is this back and forth dialogue between fighting it's not necessarily him you know trying or, or talking with other people i guess it is just kind of like solo ichigo show right now um but yeah it's just how i feel and like hopefully this next half like we'll get more of that ichigo like you know i want to see him with rukia i want to see him with his friends like he is kind of just like he that's what ichigo I does think he's right gonna have he a puts, lot more yeah and i think he he's gonna have a lot his... more to say to aizen than he had to say to okura yeah and i think that's gonna be a lot more interesting yeah, he puts everything on himself. That's kind of like Ichigo's thing. You know, he doesn't want to, you know, ex you know, Chad, you know, I want to help you. I want to fight with you. And, you know, Chad learning I'm not strong enough to fight with Ichigo yet. Um, but Ichigo kind of being like, nah, dude, it's okay. It's okay. No, everyone, don't do not do anything. I can do it all by myself. I can do it all by myself. I can do it all by myself. That leads to, you know, you seeing other characters do things using teamwork, <laughs> using strategy versus Ichigo just doing it by himself. Um, and I just want to see more from like Chad and like I want to see more from so many characters and that is an, a testament to Kubo being able to write characters that I care what, yeah, about like yeah. I, he's created so many characters and I care about all of them so inevitably they're not all going to get a lot of time but like damn dude like I just I want to see more of certain characters um, which is why again I'm really excited to get to the end of this arc and talk to talk to you about uh, what transpires and even after that uh, even more so. Um, so stay tuned for that conversation and more. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we only have two episodes left. After this episode, there will only be two episodes left. It's going to be the um, part two of the downfall arc, the conclusion of that, uh, and then the final arc, which uh, off the top of my head, uh, I, I, I don't remember the arc name, but uh, just two more left. We're going to do that last arc in, in one chunk. Yeah, uh, one chunk. And like we said, too, it's not the end of Dun Kai. It's just different. We're not going to be going beat by beat episodes like this um, after these two episodes. But we will be like reading the chapters that cover the um, the episodes. And, you know, it'll be fun because we can see the differences and we can see, you know, yes. changes or we could see, you and know, highlighted kind of experience parts. them in real time. Exactly. Yeah. And it'll be, you know, it's, it's just like funny how we're able to line everything up. 
like we are with with everything that we're doing um anime wise i guess uh and it is exciting i am excited to see that because i haven't really you know experienced like she you watch the anime side of it which is like i think a whole nother level to the bleach fandom and yeah like- no it is and you people are like oh the ost like you know for me if i am reading a manga and i find myself being like wow i wonder how this would be like i wonder if it is enhanced by the anime um in the early stages of bleach i would say no i mean the size of life is cool but other parts i'm like damn this it's a little little rough and i, well, I know there's the, a lot of filler yeah, it was, too well, it's a lot of filler and it's just yeah i mean some some of the animation i mean it, it, you know it was just it was just the time it was it was the time yeah, yeah. it was the time for yeah. sure uh and i know that and i i you know you saying you know the movie and even the fights in the anime like you know, do enhance it. And I am sure like it would be, it's going to be awesome to get to see that I, like, I, new I, shit, like that new, like crisp. bleach crisp, like this is the time like to animate bleach. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to really give you a, a, an entirely different perspective on, on the series. And I can't wait to catch up because I want to read that one shot. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah. want to really read it. And again, like, you know, I want freaking I want more Burn the Witch. Like, yeah, I really liked Burn the Witch so much. And it did everything that I felt like bleach, you know, like it's like spending time with characters, seeing, you know, maybe it's like a magical element. Sure. But I don't know. I really did enjoy that. Not to take it off topic, but, you know, it's just like Kubo, like just drawing that and being like, damn, you know, this is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. He's a madman and he's a busy guy, dude. Um, Hell yeah. But I can't wait. Um, thank you for being here all the way to the very end. If you're still here, that's going to do it for our discussion on part one of the Aronkar Downfall arc. We are not done yet. Before we go, we have to shout out. We have to thank our wonderful, our beautiful, our amazing, our Patreon members uh, and YouTube members. Uh, please, 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 please hear me when I say. Hear me. Hear me when I say the show. Would not be what it is without you, okay? Without your support. Period. Period. Uh, period. I mean, it is just... Exclamation mark, period. Exclamation right. mark, period. It is just that freaking simple, okay? It is because of your support, our Patreon and YouTube members, because of your support that we are able to do what we do. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts because your support allows us to not only invest in equipment, which is what you might think right away, but also... More importantly, equally as important, but sometimes more importantly, uh, the time it takes to read, the time it takes to to do to prepare our notes, the time it takes to record, the time it takes to edit, like all these things. And that's why we can cover so many series and do so many things at once. That's why we can, you know, do a done piece, do a done Kai, do a volume one, do a, a community live, is because it's it like we if we again, I, I say it all the time, but if we didn't have your support. I mean, we would have to, uh, you know, we would we would have to find that means other places that would take time away from from this. So the amount that we're able to do and the level that we're able to do it at is because of your support. So thank you again for everything that you do. We are so grateful. We will always be grateful. I, I mean, we are still consistently and constantly blown away every time we get a new member no matter how long you join to, like, if it's if yeah. you can only do it for a month. Yeah. I mean, how much you yeah, choose to everything. give. I mean, it. How much you choose to give. Yeah. I mean, like it, it doesn't matter. Like, your support at any on any level is so important, and we appreciate it so, 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 so much. So thank you guys from the bottom of both of our hearts. Um, If you're not a Patreon or YouTube member, and you would like to become one to become a Patreon member, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash volume on pod. And to become a YouTube member, all you got to do is click join somewhere near the subscribe button on this video that gives you early access to all of our um, content as well as access to our exclusive bonus Patreon podcast, Volume 1 Extra, where we talk about everything, anime, manga included, but also everything outside of it. We talk about other movies and TV shows, um, things in our personal life behind other the scenes. Other forms of media. Other forms of yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, talk yeah. about anything and everything on Volume 1 Extra. Uh, and all of those perks are available at our lowest tier on both places. So it's up to you where you choose to support if you would like to. You can either go to patreon.com slash volume one pod to become a Patreon member or to become a YouTube member. All you got to do is click join somewhere next to the subscribe button on this video. But if you're at a place in your life where you just cannot give financially, please don't worry. And even if you just flat out don't want to, that's fine too. You don't have to. But there are plenty of other ways that you can 
show your support um, that mean just as much, that matter just as much that you can do for absolutely free and, and pretty pretty low effort, too, <laughs> that Megan will tell you all about right now. Yes. Uh, if you have no mas pesos, oh, shit. all you have to do is comment, like, uh, even subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, um, to our channel. And it acts as a free tip to us. Um, it spreads the videos far and wide across the crazy algorithm that is a part of YouTube. And it and it consumes um, YouTube's uh, life. It's consumes, energy it consumes the soul. It consumes all. It's it all consume, consuming. It's all the consuming, algorithm, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you, yeah, again, if you don't have any um, means to support us financially, don't even worry about it. You can comment like, you can comment a comment, comment emoji, comment a period, or comment algorithm gang gang. And we know that you are supporting the volume one. Um, you, you are gang affiliate with volume one once you do that. Um, so don't come after me. Uh, just, you know, I'm not like inciting like right. gang activity. But right. if you did want to join the algorithm gang, a gang um, that is up to your own volition. Uh, but yeah, you can do all that for free. Um, even if you go to iTunes or if you listen on Spotify uh, for all the audio listeners, you can leave reviews and that helps us out so much. Um, we recently on Chartable, which is crazy. Um, I know it changes all the time, but we got I like, don't even know where they get their number. Their yeah, from. but we got like number six. Like we're yeah, in like sick. the top 10. Like I don't think that's ever really happened. And, you know, the, the U.S. We're from the United States. And it was just so crazy to see that. And those reviews help us out so for much. Real. Like you listening helps us out so much um, because we are on audio platforms. We do, um, you know like we appreciate your support so much it's not only on youtube audio too like we appreciate everything you guys do for us and, and we have people that tell us all the time that they bounce back and forth yeah yeah if, you, if you're listening right now and don't know uh what we look like because that's always fun too i always yeah. listen to podcasts and i'm like i wonder if they have like any pictures or youtube it's always just like a fun reveal if you don't know um but you know like uh, social media too twitter instagram our discord is always popping we have a great community on discord like the most non-toxic like a amazing people in there um and it is so close-knit and so respected and so respectable i guess um and yeah join all that stuff if you if you're looking to talk anime and manga and stuff. yeah hell yeah any and all ways that you choose to show your support we appreciate from the bottom of our hearts even if it's just staying here to the very 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 end view duration mm. longer form videos that helps so much um so again even if you're just here thank you for that as well uh, but that's gonna do it for another Dunkai episode only two more left uh, before we start getting the thousand year blood war arc, arc anime reactions and chapter discussions corresponding chapter discussions um, but the only thing left to do now megan mm. is to get out of here on our outro that's always the same and never changes which today is mm. i liked zon cocteau that was pretty funny yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Release your Zon Cocteau. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of maybe oh. dangerous to tell people to do that. Yeah. Respectfully, re respectfully, consensually um, release your Zon Cocteau. Um, mm, but you don't like it anymore. You don't I'm like trying, it anymore. Maybe not. Uh, we could just say like, you know, like Bankai is like a saying. And like, right. you know, but you don't, people don't yell Zon Cocteau. You know? That's what I'm saying. Zon yeah. Cocteau. I mean, you would just say, you know, re release it. Yeah, but, you know, consensually release your song. I say show me, but that's kind of inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> show me your song cocktail. Let's just say, like, consensually release your song cocktail. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, by all means, release it. Just make consensually, sure. Consensually, yeah. Just make sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Make sure you're being respectful about it. Respectful, consensual. Um. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Are you okay yeah, with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time, consent, consent. Okay, one more time. Respectfully, consensually, okay, release okay. your Zompa cocktail. Okay, okay, okay. Respectfully, consensually. Right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time, respectfully, respectfully and consensually, consensually release your Zon cocktail. Release it. Release it. And, 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 and. Release. The second release, by the way, is always a, is a little harder than the first release.